The number seven is lucky to many. The remaining 27 players at the World Series of Poker main event hope day seven is their luckiest day yet. Sure, it took a lot of skill to get here, but there was plenty of luck along the way. If your one time hasn't been used... One time. I'm gonna use my one time right now. Actually, this is my one time. You might want to use it now. The big money is on the line. Uh. Time for day seven. Moving in for the kill. And there it is. Helmut wins the championship. Moneymaker puts his name amongst the greatest players in the game. Wake me now. Table in November, 27 players remain at the World Series of Poker main event. Day seven, let's go baby. Day seven. Day seven, let's go. Time to shine. I mean, like winning the main event is every poker player's dream, right? I mean, it's it's the thing, it's the one. And so, you know, getting this close and having a real chance to uh, to do it is very exciting. It's pretty surreal. Uh, I didn't, it's all finally hitting me. Like, I wasn't excited at all. And, now is finally like see an end in sight. I'm ready. Lon McCarran here with Norman, Chad, and Kara Scott as we see Texan bar owner James Alexander walk into the Amazon room. Former main event champ Carlos Mortensen is alive and well. And you just saw him ordering a rental Brinks truck to take home the $8.3 million first prize. Boy, he's confident. 58-year-old Steve G continuing his storybook run here in 2013. And the storybook is called Steve G Turns Las Vegas into his personal candy land. You don't see G in the top nine, not yet at least. Leading the way, German Anton Morgenstern with a staggering chip count of nearly 22 million. Three Canadians in the middle of the pack, Ukrainian-born Yevgeny Temeshenko with a below average stack. Canadians have become the new Texans of No Limit Hold'em, Lon. Who taught them how to play? The bottom nine still in the hunt. The short the stack belongs to former online phenom David Benefield. The clock ticking on Benefield and Jorn Volthaus, each starting day seven with just 15 big lines. Whatever. My hair <laughs> up. Bro, I'd be in raging tilt right now if I had hair like that. Really? Calm down, kid. It's all right. It's on your hair. I'll okay. go. You can redo it. I can do it on the break. You can redo it. Try not to get involved in any hands before the break. <laughs> Tilt mode now. Right yeah. ahead. <laughs> really? Uh, I can see in your glasses. I'm messing with you. Man. Yeah. You want that one back? Who cares, who cares what your hair looks like right now? Yeah. A bunch of dudes. Right True. Now. JC Tran and Mark Newhouse making small talk to calm their nerves before this big day gets underway. Tran, a successful family man and successful tournament grinder. That's way too much success for my tastes. I'm glad he balances that successful life with the Sacramento Kings. Anton Morgenstern, a force at this feature table, young and fearless. I know youth is wasted on the young. I hope those chips aren't wasted too. The next nine players to go out all win the same amount, over 285 large. After that, things will get even more lucrative. Action under the gun. Sylvain Lousselieve, French pro, ace deuce off suit. 26-year-old lives in London. One of his roommates is Elkie Bertrand Gropelier. And a raise on the very first hand of day seven. It's 250,000 from Lousselieve. Steve G, remarkably still in this main event, will not play this hand. Folded around to Mark Newhouse, 10-8 of spades. He took care of the hair problem with a hat. Newhouse calls on the button. J.C. Tran, ace, 10 of diamonds. And he will come along as well. In the small blind, Dutch pro, Mikiel Brummelhaus with two red queens. Brummelhaus and Amsterdam buddy, Jorn Valthaus, both here at the fixture table. All in. And Brummelhaus re-raises all in for over 2.2 million. Fabian Ortiz in the big blind with ace jack gives it up. Loosely, the original razor. Well, if Loosely had gotten a receipt for his original raise, he could get the chips back, Lon, but he wasn't thinking. Loosely folds his weak ace. Newhouse gives up his 10 high. And now just a suited ace stands between Bremelhaus and an early end of this hand. Well, it's a wake-up call here for J.C. Tran. First hand of day seven and a decision for about 17% of his stack. J.C. reluctantly gives up the hand. Bremelhaus 
Picks up Queens at just the right time. Adds about a million new chips to his stack. 26 yes. big blinds is very workable. <laughs> we don't have friends here, Jordan. That sucks. I'll cheer for you. Yeah. For many of these players, day seven is the most pressure they've ever felt on the felt. Enjoy a great day and find yourself at the final table, playing for 8.3 million bucks. Have a bad day and spend a lifetime wondering what if. Norman, how can these players be in the moment and play their game? I'm more a squeak my way into day two kind of guy, but I definitely know what it's like to freeze in pressure situations. I've dropped the ring during two of my three marriage proposals. Frankly, the best way to make the final table is to not think about the final table. Or as 2004 main event champ Greg Raymer says, just make the best decision you can on every hand. After that, it's up to the cards, and cards, like women, can have a mind of their own. At the secondary table, two players over 10 million. One of them, Carlos Mortensen, knows day seven pressure, even though he's never played a day seven in the main event. He won his world title over five days in 2001. On the right, Alex Livingston with pocket kings, open raise. Mark Etienne McLaughlin called from the button with a seven of spades. Two Canadian pros see ace, deuce, five. Livingston hates to see that. McLaughlin runs down the Kings. And actually all three Canadians here at the secondary table. We're trying to isolate them and study them. The one tell I can see so far, Alon, is they're nicer than us. <laughs> Livingston checks. McLaughlin allegedly is a tattoo artist. Is that like being a pediatrician without having any kids? The guy is clean as a whistle. Indeed, yeah. He checks as well. Ten of hearts on the turn now. Livingston calls poker a mental grind, but says he loves the freedom it gives him. Certainly wary of seeing that ace on the flop, but maybe emboldened by McLaughlin's check. Now leads with 310,000. Besides being a tattoo artist, McLaughlin deals in the stock market, also has some real estate holdings. And he's got some purple chips in his hand. That's a call. River card now. McLaughlin way ahead and trips now for McLaughlin. But seeing another ace, Livingston, with even more reason to think his pocket kings are good here. It's just less likely McLaughlin has an ace. So Livingston with chips in hand. Bets 580,000. And now McLaughlin with the best of it, but a weak ace makes the call and will take down that pot. A rare back into a big hand with a weak ace moment for Mark Etienne. McLaughlin quietly tattoos Livingston on that one. And enjoys 57 big blinds. Plus a three bet. <laughs> How you don't fly two to aces? But it was spade. Spade always spades are hard, oh, yeah. hard, I don't like them. I read her just. All right, now to the only outer table left. Max Coleman with ace four of clubs just re-raised Benjamin Pollock all in pre-flop. Pollock holds two black nines and is the shorter stack of the two similar size stacks. Pollock, another French pro living in London. Coleman born and resides in Wichita, Kansas, the London of the Midwest. <laughs> call. Pollock calls all in and he will have the advantage in this matchup against the ace four of clubs. Pollock makes the good tough call for his main event life. Coleman led the main event field at the end of day three, stumbled, and then regained a big stack. He's going to have to come from behind to score this knockout. Here we go. Jack, Trey, Deuce. The nine's still good for Pollock. Coleman still has the overcard and also drawing to the wheel. Give me a spade. Pollock not happy to see Coleman's outs increase. Another Jack on the turn. Pollock's tournament life comes down to the river card. Pollock sweating it out. Coleman needs an ace or a five to send him home. River card is a five. Pollock is out. There's the straight for Coleman. Max knows he got away with one there. Pollock, the first casualty of day seven, out in 27th. At the moment, Pollock looks like Carter Gill in shades. <laughs> Just another brutal main event exit. Max Coleman nearly doubles up after getting it in bad, but getting out to the good. The lucky river card allows Coleman to drag the pot, turning Benjamin Pollock into a bystander instead of a contender. You know, for a lot of these guys, they're not professional players. You know, they're just here at one, one or two tournaments a year, and they're making a very deep run. Their friends are watching. It's a very exciting place to be. Whether you're from Europe, Asia, 
Canada, wherever. This is the event that you must show up for. It's very easy to just sort of lose your mind or, or let it kind of slip, and you just have to really be conscious and think about everything that's going on and take your time. That is Mark Newhouse, Cash Game Pro, sitting right around the middle of the pack here on day seven. Mark, just 28 years old, but it still feels like he's been around the poker scene for a while now. Can you be a seasoned vet at 28, Norman? Well, when you win a WPT title for a million and a half, then blow it all and have to start from scratch to build it back up, you feel like you've lived several lifetimes by the time you're 28. Mark says, I've made nearly every mistake you can make in this business, and I've learned from all of them. Average stack now with 26 players left, about 7.3 million. Newhouse from early position. Queen 10 off suit. He's sitting next to J.C. Tran. Good friends who have played a lot of high limit holding with each other in L.A. A raise from Newhouse to 240,000. Tran with ace five of spades. Tran and Newhouse frequent throws at the yeah, Commerce yeah. Casino in Los Angeles. Yeah, that's a call from J.C. Thermal House and Ortiz fold on the button. Sylvain Luzli, Jack 10. Luzli likes to surf and snowboard. He also likes rugby. If you like all of that, you're going to like Jack-10 offsuit on the button. <laughs> and he does like it. Not enough to raise, but he likes it. Small blind out of the way. Steve G in the big. Six deuce, and he does fold. So a suited ace for J.C. Tran is best right now. All right, here we go. The flop. 987 all spades. Tran with a nut flush. Loosely flopped to straight, but drawing dead. Newhouse drawing live only to the six of spades for a straight flush. Wow. <laughs> Newhouse checks. Uh, I'd like to photograph that flop and send it to the Smithsonian <laughs> for generations of visitors to see. Tran checks the nut flush. Tran checking, figuring loosely might bet. And of course he will. He's got the jack high straight, but you know, I flopped an ace high flush line <laughs> 74 times in my life, and every time I've checked, it's checked around. Loosely is reaching for chips. Frenchman bets 425,000. My sympathy is to Loosely. He flops a straight with a straight flush draw, but the 10 of spades he needs is already taken, and he's drawn dead, and Newhouse here drawing virtually dead. Newhouse makes the call against the bigger stacks. Everyone in this hand in sunglasses, so it's hard to see each other. And now Tran with the nut flush. Just with the call there. Well, JC doesn't raise there. He, he's hoping one of his opponents has a big spade and another one comes. Turn card ace of clubs. Newhouse misses. And he checks. And now Tran has a commanding lead with that nut flush. Well, JC's not going to wait on his monster any longer. Yep, no more slow play. 925,000. Well, that ace on the turn might have hit one of the other hands, but loosely knows if his jack high straight was good before, it's still good now. Sylvain with 14 million chips to start the hand. Tran with 11 million six. And there's a call from Loosely, and Newhouse gets out of the way. Well, just a call from Loosely. He's thinking JC might have slow played a flush. So heads up to the river. Turn card the eight of hearts pairs the board. Man, I don't know how much the board pairing worries Tran right there. Tran flopped the nut flush and now checks. And they both check. And JC's nut flush will allow him to drag the pot. Well, JC misses a little value on the river. Kind of like drafting DeMarcus Cousins. <laughs> Big pots. Get built rapidly here on day seven. Nice and JC over 14 million in second place overall, loosely down to just over 13 million. But the three top stacks in the main event sit at this table Morgan Stern, JC Tran, and Sylvain Loosely. All right, three chips still in play. The 5K orange, the smallest, the green worth 25,000, and the lavender chip, the big one right now, worth 100,000. We'll keep it here at the featured table. And an interesting dynamic at this table. Tran and Newhouse, good friends from L.A. Brimmel House and Vault House, good friends from Amsterdam. I think it's going to be hard for him to, hard for him to call that. You can't bet there. We were. Just never check. He might bluff, too. Yeah, he might have missed. On the button, a very short stack. You are in Vault House with Ace-9. He has a flush. Of course. And that's just not going to be able to call. My, my bet would have been close to two million. I'm all in. All in. Vault House moves his 13 big blinds into the middle. Steve G in the small blind with Ace King. 
Bad luck for Vault House. G happens to have a bigger ace. Steve, the second shortest stack at this table. And he all says in. all in for 24 bigs. Morgan Stern, the chip leader with ace nine. That's good. And he gets rid of it. And so Vault House will be the one at risk, dominated by Steve G. Yeah, G himself just with 24 big blinds left, but in great shape here against Vault House. It looks like G about to pick up some much needed ammunition. Here's the flop, Vault House at risk. And there's a king, that's a crusher for Yorn as G pairs up. Yeah, Vault House with the dreaded less than 1% symbol next to his name. Turn card another for Vault House needed runner, runner. Good luck, guys. But comes up empty out in 26th place. From Vault House to Outhouse, a great run for the 30-year-old Dutch pro. Over 285,000 for Vault House as he makes a hasty exit. Steve G with some critically needed chips, knocks out the only shorter stack at this table, now finds himself much healthier with 40 big blinds. Kara Scott spoke with him earlier. Where do you think making back-to-back -back final tables in the main event would rank in poker history? Well, that's, I, I don't really know where it would rank. It's not really up to me. To me, it's more for the meetings and fans. They make that decision. But I had um, talked earlier, and last year it was a different feeling because last year I made the final table, and I really felt like I had to win to accomplish something. This year the feeling is so different that I think if I make the final table, it's such a huge accomplishment. Even if I don't win, I'm going to come away with a really good feeling. When we were down to 27 last year, he was 22nd in chips. Down to 27 this year, he was 23rd. It looks familiar. Yep, Steve's already earned that really good feeling, in my opinion. To the secondary feature table, not back-to-back -back for Carlos Mortensen, but he is a strong contender to win his second main event. Action at this table on Italian pro Sergio Castelluccio with ace jack. Casaluccio is Italian for McCarran, correct? It is indeed. And the 37-year-old raises to 240,000. Carlos with ace nine. The, the Matador doesn't mess with ace nine offsuit, Lon. Not on my watch. Carlos Mortensen thinking about it. Your watch or not. Chips in hand. There's a call. Oh. Maybe he thought it was suited. <laughs> on the button, Alex Livingston with six tray. They go into the muck. Now Jason Mann in the small blind. The Vancouver attorney with two queens. His wife, Janet, also an attorney. She doesn't play serious poker like he does, though. One in the family is enough, she says. Mann starting the hand with seven million chips. He's had a nice run here at the main event, and that's a re-raise to 890,000. Big blind Mark Etienne McLaughlin with queen seven. Quick fold, now Castelluccio. And Castelluccio perhaps reconsidering Ace Jack. By the way, I'd be very disappointed if Carlos Morrison hasn't already mentally folded his hand. Boy, Castelluccio, that is not a folding action. That is a four bet action to 1,540,000. Carlos does quickly get out of the way. Oh, a four bet. We well, you know Canadians are peaceful people. <laughs> That's a little poker violent towards Mr. Man. But Jason will make the call. And Jason's gonna make the so call. these two even stacks will see a flop with three and a half million in the middle. Four, Trey seven. Neither player holds a diamond. Man best with the queens and checks. Castelluccio checks as well. Turn card. Six of hearts. Puts a straight draw on the board now, too. Another check from Mann. Well, the man whose sleeves are too short for his arms is going to reach out here and try to take the pot down right now. With ace high, Castelluccio. That's a million 360. Well, Sergio four bet preflop, so it's very unlikely he has a five in his hand. Jason might be worried Sergio slow play to flush. Well, the Queens. Feel good enough for man to make the call here. Call. All right, so with almost 6.3 million in the middle, man still with the upper hand. The river card ace of spades. Castelluccio gets there. Man checks. Well, better to be lucky than good. I would just check back here and sheepishly take the pot. And he does indeed. And top pair will overrun the queens of Jason Mann. See, you got to be lucky to beat these Canadians. 
They're the new Texans of No Limit Hold'em lot. Quite a hit to the stack of man. Three million of his chips go long distance across the felt to Castelluccio. A big boost to the Italian stack. The River Race bails him out. Jason Mann will think long and hard about that hand, knowing it slipped from his grasp. The bracelet the 25 remaining players are gunning for, and it comes with $8.3 million for first place. One player who has not drawn a lot of attention so far, Israeli-born Amir Lehavut, who is familiar with kings and queens in a different game. I definitely think that there's some correlation to my chess success and my poker success. There's definitely um, analytical thinking helps a lot in poker, but I think the two games are very, very different. And um, there's a lot of skills that you need to have in poker that you don't need to have in uh, chess. There's a lot more psychology in poker, there was a lot more variance in poker, way more variance. But I, I definitely do think that there's a lot of similarities as well. As a teenager, Amir won the 18 and under Texas Junior Chess Championship. Right now he's in trouble after flopping a set of deuces. His opponent, Matt Reed, flopped a club flush. Two million in the pot. Reed bets a million three. Leva stopped playing chess at age 18. To play at the most elite level, he said, it was just way more studying than he wanted to do. Two very even stacks of 7.8 million each. And there's a call from Lehavut. Yep, you got the best of it, Mr. Reed. River card now. A six, the board does not pair, so Reed is best. And there's a check from Lehavut. You know, Lon, both chess and poker have the term check. Ah, that is true. It's much more lethal in chess. Three million from Matt Reed. Yeah, now chess has the term checkmate, poker doesn't. I guess this is like checkmate on the river. It would be, and Amir would understand that quite well. Yeah, that's a big river bet. Leovut would have to call off half his remaining stack here. Matt trying to make this look suspiciously big. It is tempting to Amir. Yeah, a set of deuces, tough to get away from. Lehavut does fold, and what a fold it was. Yeah, nice fold from the bracelet winner. Nice hand. Thank you. So, get to see it on TV, huh? Probably. This 28-year-old knows what it's like to play at this level. This deep, making his second deep run in the main event, finished 89th in 2010. He doesn't play chess, but he does play the piano. In the last couple of years, he's played less poker and started helping his dad on his Ohio farm. They grow corn and soybeans. I think he was exchanging tips with farmer Phil Mater earlier in the main event. <laughs> Reed started this day seven with 7.7 .7 million, so a nice pop early in his day seven. Featured table now. Steve G has given up some of his recent winnings. He's down to 3.3 million. Morgan Stern and Trant with impressive tallies. Anton, the main event chip leader still. Pocket nines for G under the gun. G was up to 40 big blinds earlier. I think he's in his comfort zone, though, in the 20s. Steve with a raise to 250,000. G's second time around as a tournament poker player has been much more lucrative for him, even though he does admit it always seems to be an uphill struggle to stay ahead. Tran folds to McKeel Brimmelhaus, 10-4 of diamonds. I lent Brimmelhaus that shirt from my 70s discotheque days. That shirt was a chip magnet. <laughs> and of course, if you're gonna wear that shirt, you should wear those shades. You gotta wear the shades. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting real when the glasses get put on. Yeah, right. Carlos did the same yesterday. But, yeah. but, but what exactly is Brimmelhaus thinking right now with the 10-4? He's shorter stacked than G is. Brimble House with a re-raise to 580,000. That's an odd play. Raised to 580, leaves himself with about 2 million behind. So back to G with the nines. Yeah, they're still pocket nines, Steve. Once again, G has hooked the only player with a shorter stack at his table. Smaller. And all he in. raises Brimble House all in. And McKeel gives it up. What was that about? Well, at least the better shirt and the better shades won that one lawn, not to mention the better hand. G back over 4 million chips again. McKeel sits with only 16 big blinds. Actually, I think Phil Helmuth might have approved of Bremel House's play there. <laughs> and Steve G approves of it as well. Now from the feature table to the outer table, Texas law grad and bar owner James Alexander checked after turning trip sixes. Matt Reed has queens up and a slim chance of taking this pot. 
but he does bet a half million. Oh, Reed has no idea that the Texas bar owner has somehow turned 7 6 suited into trips on the turn. 1250. James with a raise to a million 250. Yep, it's still the overpair to the board, and it's still probably the best hand, but it's not! Alexander turning suited connectors into gold. I dare you to call me. But Matt Reed does indeed. He will rue the day he made that call, Lon. Rue it. River card now. Five of hearts. Alexander's hand is best. 1.5. You heard him. Well, that five on the river changes nothing from here to Corpus Christi. The question is, does Reed think Alexander is bluffing or overvaluing a 10? And look at James, appearing as though he's got nothing to hide. Come and get me. Yeah, there's no way I can fool. Matt Reed calls, and Alexander shows him the goods. James Alexander now, over 11 million chips. Yevgeny Timoshenko claps. Don't know why. Brother Dwayne has got a smartphone. Don't know why. Matt Reed with fewer chips now. We know why. Just over 7.3 million. Overrating his overpair, falling victim to Alexander. This is the 2013 World Series of Poker main event. We've come a long way since day one of the 2013 main event. 6,352 players entered the seventh largest main event field ever. 25 are left. The chip leader, German Anton Morgenstern, who Norman, I believe, is a whippersnapper, no? Yeah, he's 22, the youngest player still here. Steve G at 58, the oldest player still here. And Yulon at 56, the oldest member of our broadcast team, with <laughs> Kara Scott, slightly younger than me. <laughs> to the secondary table, Jason Mann with pocket tens. Jason's wife, Jan, is here. I asked her how long they'd been married. First she said seven years, then corrected herself and said eight. These lawyers, Lon, every other thing out of their mouth is a lie. Man with a race of 255,000. He's starting the hand with 36 big blinds. Folded around to Bruno Kawauch. He's so easy to find in a crowd. Clément Tripodi, Jack seven. Rags. Rags! Yeah, but he got some TV time. Big blind Chris Lynn, queen nine off suit. Those are rags too. But he is one of the bigger stacks and loves to use that chip stack to make his opponents as uncomfortable as possible. Well, my uncle Nathan used to say, if you're looking for trouble, you will find it. I think Chris Lynn is looking for trouble. There is a re-raise to 685. He is consistent with his aggressive nature. Now back to man. Man had pocket queens before, and if he had played them stronger, he might have shed Sergio Castelluccio. Here with pocket tens, if he plays them strong enough, he might shed Chris Lynn. Just a call, though. And he will drag Chris Lynn to the flop with him. And here is the flop five. Queen five. Queens up for Lynn to pretty much nullify man's hand. Rags to riches, Lon. Chris Lynn. Now with chips in hand. 840,000. And man thinking, where was that flop when I had pocket queens? No kidding. And he's still stinging from that hand against Castelluccio. All in. Jason says all in. And the paired board might help him. Well, a call here would cost Lynn about 30% of his remaining stack. Lynn might be most worried about man having a hand like ace-queen. Lind could play judge, jury, and executioner to the attorney. And he calls. Yeah. Hope you have ace-ten of hearts. Better than that. What is it? Chris has queen at nine. Nice hand. Yeah, I'm so bad, man. Big mistake by man, and he is frustrated with himself. Jason Mann on his feet, all in. Turn card, eight of diamonds, no help to man. Man looking for a two outer to stick around. He needs a 10 and a 10 only, or he is wamboozled. 
And now the river card is a six. Len gets a fortunate flop and a needy opponent, adding up to the elimination of Jason Mann, who will be missed. Len Sandy celebrates. All right, bud. Such a nice lawyer. Hate to see him go. From small stakes home games a few years ago to a juicy six figure cash for man. Very tough time folding top air. <laughs> Chris Land stacking nearly 16 million chips. Jason Mann, though, has plenty to be proud of an impressive 25th place finish in the main event. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Oh. Hope you have ace 10 of hearts. Very tough time folding top there. <laughs> Early in his career, Chris Lynn dressed for success as an investment banker. As a poker player, dress took on a different meaning. Not my proudest moment. I was kind of broke uh, and on a trip in the Dominican Republic uh, with all my buddies. I really wanted to play uh, the main event that we went down there for instead of just being on the vacation. And some of them decided they'd put up 500 each uh, and buy a dress off one of the guys that was selling them off the beach in, in the Dominican and if I wore it for the whole event. Woo! But then I'd get to, I'd get to play. <laughs> but I'm not easily humiliated, so. I did wear the dress, and I think I felt a little bit too comfortable in it. <laughs> the strapless look was a no-no, but the flower and the hair was a double no-no. Thankfully, he busted early that tournament. <laughs> Some refreshing candor from Chris. Action on him. Ah, two red aces on day seven of the main event, like wearing a muumuu on a balmy Caribbean night. <laughs> There's a raise to 275 on the button. Ryan Reese with Jack 10. Reese gives it up to Castelluccio, folds his small blind to the big blind, Carlos Mortensen. Carlos. King five of spades. And he wants to play. Carlos cracked pocket aces to win the 2001 main event on the final hand against Dewey Tomko. Carlos had king queen suited then and river to straight. Here's the flop, heads up, 10 ace, ace quads for Chris oh. Land. And Carlos is not going to crack pocket aces this time. <laughs> no, he won't. Well, you see Carlos, of course, drawing dead. They both check. Turn card. Well, Carlos pairs his five. Boy, it could have only been worse had Carlos hit his king on the flop. Carlos does check the turn. And Lind reluctantly is going to have to bet. He was hoping Carlos would do it for him. Yep, he will try to gauge Carlos's interest in the hand. The beauty of Lynn's playing style is he might bet there without hitting that board. 330000 And this is Carlos's situation. If we gave him a river card and an ocean card and he got running fives to make quads, he would still lose. <laughs> Carlos comes along. Carlos in the mood to play pots out of position with weak hands. River card. Seven of spades. Mortensen checks again. Can Chris get any more out of the 01 world champ? Well, that might be the safest board for pocket aces I have ever seen. I think he's got a bet. Some of the lavender chips. Six of them. Three of the orange. That equals 615,000. Carlos obviously doesn't believe Chris has an ace. And he's partially right. Chris doesn't have an ace. He has <laughs> two of them. Less than half the pot is the bet. And there's the call. Uh, yeah, one ace is good. How about two? <laughs> that was sort of a half slow roll. <laughs> it was. Lind gets to play show and tell with the quads. All of them. <laughs> Mortensen gives up some ammunition, but has eight and a half million left over. And 20 million is what Chris Lind is nearing. Only Anton Morgenstern has more. Lynn Sanity. Lots of chips for Lynn Sanity. 
And Carlos left to stew in his own juices. Now he may think twice about getting anxious to defend his blind with meager holdings. At the outer table, David Benefield picked up Ace King suited, moved his last 15 big blinds in with a re-raise. Amir Lehavut holds Jack 10 of diamonds. Lehavut starting the hand with almost 5.6 million. That is Amir, unless Eric Seidel shaved his head and re-entered. Amir calls. Yeah, I see I call with that hand too. Good luck. I would have preferred you hold. I can't. I'm thought committed. Getting better than 2 to 1. I'm <laughs> openly rooting for another player on the table. Alexander cheering for fellow Texan Benefield. You seem like good luck. You're going to need it, buddy. <laughs> there was the flop and a king. Top pair for Benefield. Amir's going to need runner, runner. Turn card, eight of spades. Nope. Brings an early end to this confrontation. Why, why you call your own freaking uh, scare cards, man? I'm, I'm brutal like that. <laughs> sadist? I guess you have to be a bit of a sadist to play poker. David Benefield doesn't have a Texas size stack just yet, but he's working on it now in 20th place. Tonight's bracelet moments are brought to you by PokerNews.com. Limit Hold'em was a triple threat at this year's World Series, giving three men their first bracelet. The $1,500 buy-in saw golf caddy Brent Wheeler come out on top, winning nearly $200,000. 63-year-old Michael Moore was the top dog in the 5K event, beating Gabriel Nassif for a first place prize of $211,000. And in the $2,500 six-handed tourney, Marco Johnson finally won gold after four career WSOP second place finishes. Well, if any of those bracelet winners want to show up on this list, they've got to put in a lot of time. Phil Helmuth with the most bracelets in history, 13, including a win at the 2012 World Series of Poker Europe main event. Helmuth with the most bracelets in the 1990s, and he's second to Phil Ivey, who is dead to me for most bracelets since 2000. 24 remain here in this main event. Chris Lind with ace tray was the only one to call the under the gun raise by Mark Etienne McLaughlin with queen jack off suit at the secondary table, so a heads up flop. Seven, Jack, seven, Jack's up for McLaughlin. Chris Lynn missed. McLaughlin checks. Five bracelet winners still in this field. Carlos Mortensen, Rep Porter, J.C. Tran, Amir Lehavut, and Steve G. Turn card now. Queen of Hearts. Mark Etienne improves to Queens up. The tattoo artist with no tattoo still can't wrap my head around that one a lot. Well, no tattoos that we can see, but what good is a tattoo if you can't see it? He checks. Lind now. There are bulls in a china shop, and then there's Chris Lind in a china shop. I think Chris Lind breaks more china. Yeah, he will do what Chris is wont to do. There's a bet of 405,000 into McLaughlin, who has queens up. Chris Lind's MO is I'm going to run everyone over. It's been working. Don't think it's going to work this time. French Canadian. Behind Chris Lynn. And there's a check raise from McLaughlin to a million fifty thousand. Well, this time I think the bull in the China shop should look for the emergency exit before breaking anything else. This hand should just be over. Is this where Chris Lynn does bid adieu? It doesn't look like it, Norman. Lynn, the big stack at this table with the call. He seems to be a non-believer. River card. Another Jack. Jack's full now. McLaughlin improved every step of the way. Sometimes the big stack gets too confident in their reads. Lynn's call on the turn predicated on a read he has on McLaughlin. He might want to rethink that read here. McLaughlin wants to stay consistent. And there's a bet of a million eight hundred seventy-five thousand. Again, I assume the hand is over. Chris either Hollywooding it or maybe he's thinking McLaughlin could have missed a flush draw, and maybe my ace is good here. Well, he can afford the hero call, and he does make that call. And uh, how wrong can you be? McLaughlin will stack the winnings. 1.8. Yeah, one of the big stacks just transferred a lot of chips north of the border. Nice hand. Thanks. McLaughlin now up to over 10 and a half million. As mentioned, Lind could afford to splash around, but he certainly doesn't want to make a habit of that here on day seven. All right, from the secondary table over to the featured table, 
Anton Morgenstern continuing to be one of the big stories here. He started the day with about 22 million. Now approaching 25 million. The 22-year-old from Berlin has four World Series caches and loves house music. And he's another Magic the Gathering savant. There should be a main event line with just Magic the Gathering alum. David Williams, Eric Froelich, Justin Bonomo, Brock Parker. Don't forget Adam Levy, Ike Haxton, or Scott Siever as well. Bunch of them. And at this featured table, aces in the house again. The top dog with two aces and a raise to 250,000. Vermohaus gets out of the way. Ortiz folds his small blind, big blind Sylvain Luce Lee with ace queen. Lon, I was watching a live stream of you at the Deep Stacks main event in Turlock, California uh -huh. earlier this year. You lost most of your chips with Ace Queen and then the rest with Pocket Jacks. <laughs> we just don't listen to our own advice, do we? Do you pay attention to anything you say? <laughs> all right, Loosely made the call. Heads up, flop, deuce, four, eight, all spades. Loosely with the nut flush draw, but the pocket aces are still strong for Morgenstern. After the check, Morgenstern bets 325. That's a much better flop for Loosely than Morgenstern. Loosely will come along. Morgenstern cuts quite a figure at the table. Tall, in command, like Helmuth without the rants. Nine of hearts on the turn, no flush now. Loosely a four to one dog. And things looking better for the pocket aces. And he's got to charge Loosely another drawing tax. Second check from Loosely, greeted by a bet of 650,000. You mentioned Loosely's a four to one dog, getting only three to one on a call. But there are the implied odds, which we never discuss, Lon. <laughs> Loosely will come along. 2.6 million in the middle, river card. King of spades and Loose Lee's stubbornness rewarded with the nut flush, and he checks again. Checks? Uh, that kind of reduces the implied odds, which we never discuss. <laughs> Don't mention it. And a check from Morgenstern. He was not confident in the aces. Loose Lee shows the winning hand, slowly, though. And see, Morgenstern is no poker brat. Helmuth would be ranting about something right now. Loose Lee enjoying 113 big blinds now at this featured table after taking chips off of the chip leader. We'll check, check, Ruben. Yeah. You had ace, queen, and diamonds? Yeah, you had ace, queen with an ace of spades. Yeah, and you had ace, queen, and diamonds. Aces? Aces. Oh my gosh. So he could have got it all in and sucked out? He could have. Yeah. <laughs> Sylvain Loosely takes a 7% preflop hand and turns it into a win versus the chip leader. Neon such a big part of the culture here in Las Vegas. Everyone here at the Rio hoping the neon slipper fits them. David Benefield tweeting the world about his double up with Ace King. And for mundane humor, be sure to follow at Norman Chad. Yeah, and for photographs of yield and merge road signs in Central California, be sure to follow at Lon McCarran. <laughs> Just three tables in play at the end of this day seven. We will have our November 9 class of 2013. At the featured table, Anton Morgenstern raised with pocket jacks. The chip leader got a caller in Mark Newhouse, who will take a flop with Ace King against the big stack. All right, here we go. The flop. Ace Queen four. Morgenstern can't be happy to see two overcards to his jacks. Newhouse catches an ace to grab the big advantage. Morgenstern checks. That's a pretty dandy flop for Newhouse. And I don't say dandy too often, Mark. <laughs> Newhouse, 325. Morgan Stern, born in Berlin. His father is American. He has dual German-U.S. citizenship. And like a lot of Euro poker pros, lives in London. And he's going to come along for 325. Turn card. Another queen, two pair for each. But Newhouse still best with his aces up. Morgan Stern checks again. And Newhouse checks back. River card. Ten of spades. Third spade on board. Morgan Stern, a heads-up specialist online with huge bankroll swings due to his aggressive style. He checks a third time. Checks. And Newhouse now. He's going to move some chips. 760,000. Morgan Stern giving this one some second and third thoughts. 
Well, Newhouse, best from the flop. Oh, boy. The chip leader reaching deep into those lavender chips. Yeah, that doesn't look like a call line. Anton Morgenstern muscling up with a check raise to a million six. Well, if Newhouse had just checked, he had a winner. No decision to make. But frankly, I would have thought his river bet would have ended matters. Newhouse getting four and a half to one on a call here. Well, you talk about Morgenstern's big online swings, and this is one reason for it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And here it does work, the check raise bluff. Here at the main event, it's impossible not to think about the money. But for a few of the remaining competitors, it's also about having a good time. Let me hustle, not you. Is it my hustle or yours? I'm not betting you. I'm a contender. <laughs> What's going on, brother? Some enjoy the rush of a good bluff, <laughs> while others are just content to methodically rake in chips, like chip leader Anton Morgenstern. Everyone treats this experience differently, all hunting the same $8.3 million pot of gold in November. Main event, day seven. It's the final day before the final table of the World Series of Poker main event. Here at the Rio, 24 players remain with $8.3 million for the eventual champion. I'm Lon McCarran with Norman Chad and Kara Scott inside the Rio. Three tables of eight players, including Tex and James Alexander. Oh, you're the one guy I don't want to knock out. I prefer to knock everybody else out first. Just figure out throw it out there just in case. I, honestly, I was wondering, I'm glad to have met you, and and because and more than anything else, I want to see somebody from Texas, full Texas holding down, you know what I mean? Former investment banker Chris Land looking to shore up his finances with a big score here. Anton Morgenstern with a staggering 25 million chips. He's atop the leaderboard, the Ultimate Pros Pro, J.C. Tran and fourth. The top three stacks, Morgenstern, Lind, and Alexander can show you any hand at any time, and J.C. Tran, it seems, usually just shows you the winning hand. You always look so calm and so collected at the table. Is that a true reflection of what's going on inside? Yeah, I mean, I think just just having a lot of experience playing live tournament poker, um, you got to keep calm. Some of these guys, they make really, really good reads on, on, on how you are, you know, whether you're nervous or you're, you know, look confident. I just try to stay the same no matter if I have it or not. And uh, I guess it's working out so far and, uh, I, you know, with the all the cameras and the lights, you know, you can't let it affect you. You just got to play and... Uh, not think about too much, but just just the hand itself. J.C. Tran always even keeled, one of the many reasons for his success this year and over his career. Steve G. also at the feature table, the shortest stack in the room. Eight players at each table, Morgenstern the overwhelming leader. G. with about 10% of what Morgenstern has. It doesn't look great for the oldest guy here. He'll need a double up and then some of that Steve G bluffing magic. And then Tran, the second biggest stack here, sailing smoothly. Because of JC's experience, we know he'll play the same game on day seven as he would have on day one. That's a big asset. The blinds right now at 60 and 120,000, a 15,000 chip ante. Folded to JC in the small blind. He looks down at eight deuce. Based on the poker code, a raise from the small blind is mandatory if no one's opened before him. And he does raise it up to 260. McKeel Dremel House in the big blind with King Four. Well, the seven deuce offsuit is the worst hand in Hold'em. I've got to believe the eight deuce is not far behind. <laughs> and here with blind versus blind, Dremel House also with a less than optimal starting hand. And also from the poker code, the big blind never believes the small blind. And there's a re raise to 660. Well, eight deuce is not a calling hand, Lon. You're either waving the white flag here or storming the castle with those rags. <laughs> Tran with the much bigger stack, and this is the JC code. He repops it to over 1.1 million. I just said he usually shows you the winning hand. I guess it's going to involve an eight and a deuce. Somehow Tran just knows Brimmel House is not very strong. Then again, maybe the Dutch Pro has a five bet in him. What a moment here between Brummel House and Tran. McKeel finally relents, and J.C. Tran can't show the best hand, but he can stack the winnings. We asked Phil Helmuth to do his white magic segment on this hand line, but we had a technical malfunction. His white magic wouldn't start up <laughs> with a starting hand like eight deuce. 
In many professions, predictability and consistency make you a star. In poker, predictability is a surefire way to end up on the rail. As we get into day seven play and the players become more familiar with each other, Norman, how can they avoid falling into this trap? Well, you're right, Lon. Predictability is a killer in poker. For instance, every time the river card comes, you tell us what it is. We can see what it is! You're so predictable, and thus you end up at a dead-end broadcasting job working with me. <laughs> Now, J.C. Tran is a master of changing gears and misdirection. He's unpredictable. And when the river card comes, he hardly ever shouts it out to the table. We've crowed often about the first prize money, but if you can uh, hang around and fold your way to third or second, still very rewarding. Over at the secondary table from the button, Carlos Mortensen called a pre-flop raise from Claymon Tripoli. Tripoli then flop top pair while the 0-1 champ whipped. Tripoli leads out now for 250000 We've seen the Matador playing mostly from behind here on day seven and not seeming to mind it. Carlos with the suited king. He raises to 560,000. Triple D started playing after watching the World Poker Tour on French TV. Yeah, I guess the World Series isn't on French TV. Jeez. <laughs> Triple D with the top pair. 310,000 is a call. But the Matador may have planted a seed of doubt in the Frenchman's mind. Turn card now. Deuce of diamonds. Triple D does not improve. He checks. Carlos with a flush draw. Maybe Triple D saw Mortensen on French TV. Carlos has three WPT titles to go with his two World Series bracelets. And Carlos doing what Carlos does, reaching for chips. Former main event champ with a million one hundred eighty thousand. Yeah, a lot of players would shut down after their bluff raise on the flop gets called. Not the Matador. Matadors don't quit when the bull walks into the ring. Fight on. Of course, Carlos has to trust his opponent. Knows what he's doing enough to make a good fold. Carlos, one of three players in the final twenty-four, a chess background, along with Max Coleman and Amir Lehavut. Tripodi's background is in soccer, which is no match for chess as a mind game. And Tripodi does fold to the pressure of Carlos Mortensen. I believe Tripodi means fold the winner in French. I'm waiting for Google Translate to fire up. <laughs> Carlos over nine and a half million after his burglary of Tripodi under the bright lights of the secondary table. Want to know more about your favorite poker player? Head over to ESPN.com slash poker. Everyone trying to act like they've been there before. Two of them have made a main event final table, Carlos Mortensen in 01, and last year, Steve G. When Dan Harrington made back-to-back -back final tables in 2003 and 4 against large fields, I thought that might be one of the three greatest accomplishments in main event history. If Steve G goes back-to-back -back against even larger fields, that trumps Harrington's feet. You saw the queen exposed on... Fabian Ortiz's fold, folded over to Steve G. 10-7 of diamonds in the small blind. Poker code, Norman. What's the poker code again? If it's folded to you in the small blind, you got to raise it up. 250 is what G makes it. G quit playing poker full time for 20 years. I guess it's like riding a bike, but when you get back on that poker bike, there's a lot of new potholes on the road. Chip leader Morgan Stern with pocket eights in the big blind, a real hand. Morgan Stern's background is in Magic the Gathering, which is like chess without the bishops. <laughs> and Morgan Stern with a re-raise to 550. All, all, all in. G says all in. And a snap call from Morgan Stern. And it all comes down to Steve G's 10-7 of diamonds. Wow. Boy, G said he was all in with a shaky voice line, and now he's in a shaky spot. He pushed with 22 big blinds left. It was just a small percentage of the 26 million chips for Morgan Stern to call G down. Yeah, I don't think the big stack was going to fold a lot of hands there. Here is the flop and an eight! Wow. A set for Morgan Stern and G's hopes are but a Jacker small flicker. Jacker nine for a sweat one time? Jacker nine and, J Jacker, Jacker nine, nine, nine and diamonds for a sweat one time? <laughs> back to back final tables look very bleak right now. Turn card. Ace of spades, G misses, cannot win the hand, and will not make back-to-back -back main event final tables. Well, he lost his last all-in last year, and he lost his last all-in this year. Those are bad memories. Everything else, unbelievable and awesome. 
Morgan Stern ups his chip count to nearly 30 million. For Steve G, he used all his tools and poker powers to stay in as long as he could, but he's out of the main event in 24th place. And that walk out the boulevard of broken dreams, I'm sure G does not remember fondly. Well, G, of course, will have the knockout fresh in his memory, but what he did to get here was quite remarkable. For Morgan Stern, he could probably fold his way to the final table and still have a big stack. J.C. Tran moves a little closer to his goal of making the November 9. Steve G right now with Kara Scott. Steve G started the day on a very difficult table with a massive chip leader to his left. Talk to me about how the day played out for you. Uh, it's been a rough day, pretty much. Uh, you know, I don't even know how I got here. It's been a rough run all summer. Um, can't help but be disappointed. You know, come so close, come so far, but yeah, very disappointing finish. Yeah. What does it say about you as a player to have made such an incredible back-to-back -back deep run? Um, I don't know. Part of the biggest thing is probably mental toughness. I would say, yeah. Mental toughness and uh, an incredible run all the way through here in the main event, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mental toughness and a little bit of luck, I guess. Yeah. We will absolutely remember this, you coming so close to another final table. Thank you so much. Okay. And understandably disappointed, Steve G out of the main event. Tran with the pocket jacks. It's the last hand, man. Let us go to the restroom. I'm all in. And Keto makes the call with a good shot at knocking out J.C. Tran right here. J.C. Tran will need a jack and a jack only, or he will be wamboozled. And oh, he got the jack! Oh! Lightning keeps J.C. Tran at this table. That was the scene in 05 at a World Series of Poker Circuit event in Las Vegas. J.C. ultimately finished second to Keto Fam. Is it, is it 20K any? As we've come to learn, J.C. committed to his family, committed to poker, but also committed to his love of fishing. I'm very fortunate to live in uh, Northern California because, you know, we have the Delta as like one of the main water body that, that comes in from the San Francisco Bay that there's all types of fishing, whether it's bass, sturgeon, salmon, you name it, they're all in there. Me living not too far from it, you know, it's a privilege to be able to go and enjoy it. I'm lucky to have a wife that allows me to go fishing. It's just, it's just one of those things where when, you, when you're home, you escape from, from what you do. Very fortunate to have something like that to keep me level, you know, keep me away from thinking about playing poker all the time. JC calls the Delta near his home a honey hole. Great fishing, like guaranteed money. Better than playing in a home game with me. <laughs> Anton Morgenstern oh with guys. King Jack off suit. Hopefully I have stuff to color up. Chips in hand, a raise to 250,000. You can expect Anton to be opening a lot of hands. Tran with queens in the small blind. Let's see how the creator of white magic would play those. Very interesting hand here. JC has two queens. What to do, what to do. Well, he has 120 big blinds. In fact, 120,000 is the big blind. And so he's very deep with a lot of time to work his chips, and he's looking at a guy that has twice as many chips as he does. So why get involved in a huge pot here? Two queens might be a time to play defensively, just call, which simultaneously traps the big stack and make sure you're not gonna go broke on this hand. JC, just calling. Uh-oh, someone's actually following the Poker Brat's advice. JC could be in trouble. <laughs> big blind folded, so heads up. Tran with the Queens, Morgan Stern with King Jack, the two big stacks at this table. Four, Jack, four. Queens up for Tran is best. He checks to the Jacks up of Morgan Stern. Seemingly good flop for Morgan Stern. He might continuation bet anything here. He's certainly going to attack with two pair. Attack he does. Almost half the pot, 325,000. And when you slow play queens pre-flop against, say, King Jack, this is the flop you like to see. You see the graphic. That's the number of chips they have left in their stack after betting. And, and as Phil Helmuth mentioned, about a two-to-one differential. There is a call from JC. So he's not going to push any buttons right now. Turn card. Six of clubs. Changes nothing. Trans still best. JC checks again. Well, as Helmut suggested, Tran is playing the hand defensively, which effectively avoids a big pot against the big stack. Morgan Stern fires away, 675 this time. And of course, what might appear to be defensive could actually be trapping. 
JC. Just calling chips right now, and they are now in the pot. The pot worth over 2.7 million. River card, another six. So Trans Hand is best. Both these players, I'm sure, happy not to see a diamond on the river. JC plays pretty methodically. Says he makes mistakes when he rushes himself. Tran checks a third time. And now Morgenstern, who has followed each of JC's checks with a bet. Well, I think he's betting for value right here. The chip leader puts out a million and a quarter. Anton figures he might get called by, say, pocket nines or pocket tens, a queen jack, a jack ten, or even by an ace. And now J.C. Tran <laughs> makes the call. And three check calls worth a 5.2 million chip pot to J.C. Tran there. That's that. Thanks. They're very nice for J.C. Anton Morgenstern is far from a fish, but Tran definitely reeled him in there. Check, check, check. Tran gets three streets of value by slow playing his queens. A little white magic. Take some chips from the chip leader, J.C. Tran, over 17 million now. If he keeps winning pots like these, well, he can afford to spend a lot of quality time on the river instead of worrying about the river. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Welcome back to day seven of the World Series of Poker main event. 6,352 players started way back on day one. Now we're down to just 23. Action here at the featured table. Sylvain Loosley, king 10 of clubs. French poker pro with a raise to 325,000. Chief Farber with ace jack in the small blind. I've always resisted tattoos, Lon. You don't want to mess with perfection. <laughs> Farber with a call of 245,000. <laughs> Farber's been playing pretty snug. Surprised to see him call there out of position. I'm like, I didn't know I was, I was just automatically out of the hand. <laughs> What Heads happened? up, Farber and Loosley. Here's the flop. Six, ace, ten. Top pair for Farber, middle pair for Loosley. My friend, comedian Don McHenry's foolproof theory of poker is a ten always helps somebody. Hmm. Farber checks. Middle pair, pair of tens for Loosley. Bets 325,000. Yeah, the ten did help Loosley, but he is behind. Farber with top pair just calls. Turn card now. Tray of diamonds misses both. Of course, a deuce or tray on the turn doesn't help anybody, anywhere, anytime, in any way. Farber checks. You see by that graphic, now we're down to 22 players. Loosely checks back. River card is a five. Farber's aces hold up. And he checks. Check. No, no, no. no. I was, sorry. That was fake clapping. He's not checking. Whatever you... So Farber says he was, quote unquote, clapping to recognize the announcement of Tripoli's elimination. Fake clapping? I believe him, but it was a check. The table's supposed to know the difference between fake clapping and a check. He tapped the table four times. That's a quadruple check. They're going to let it go, and Farber did not check. He instead bets 575000 I assume loosely didn't see the fake clapping check because I'd get a ruling if I were him and he'd win. So now loosely who cannot win the hand by just calling, does indeed just call. And Farber shows the best hand and will stack the winnings. Yeah, Jay gets an extra 575000 on the river with his unprecedented fake clap check bet. <laughs> Farber's rail loves it here in Las Vegas. Their man up to over $7.7 million. Two fake claps. Yeah, here it is again. If there was instant replay in poker like there is in the NFL, that would have been a check for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, how, what did you do? I didn't see it. I 
I tap the table, like clapping with one hand. I don't want to take my hand. Yeah. Stop being lazy, dude. Just clap with your hands. I'm lazy. I was in a hand. I don't want to take. I don't want to motion my hand off my cards. You know. Would this, be a, would this be a check? No. <laughs> Listen, man. I want to hear it from you. Is it 160? Let me enjoy my moment. All right. Jay Farber leads an exciting life away from the felt. Exactly. And let me enjoy my moment right now. His day job is really a night job. I definitely think that I'm a normal guy. I mean, I, I'm really fortunate to be where I'm at in every aspect of this. I don't take it for granted for one second. I've been in nightlife here for almost five years. Tonight, you're going to see one of the best parties imaginable. I mean, this is the number one club in Las Vegas. It's going to be just a crazy night. We used to joke that uh, I worked in 9 to 5. It was just the opposite 9 to 5. You know, we're typically getting ready to go to work 8, 9 o'clock at night and out till 4, 5, 6 in the morning. Tonight, I've got a bachelorette party from San Diego and take them out, make sure everybody has a good time and hopefully party with Tiesto a little bit. I have the easiest job ever. I get to party for a living. I take people out and make sure they have a good time. It's pretty awesome. I started as a promoter and I worked my way up to host, and from there I've just kind of branched out and started working for myself. Very competitive. Uh, you know, it takes a lot to get to the top and it takes a lot to stay on top. So right now we are inside the Ling Ling Lounge in Hakkasan, Las Vegas. 65,000 square feet, give or take. Tiesto's been the number one DJ in the world for, what, like 15 years now, if not more, you know? It's awesome, it's really fun to go watch him spin. Tonight's party is gonna be the best party you've ever seen until, until tomorrow's party. Two to, two to three streets of value, right? That's perfect. Yeah, just, dude, you're sure. just gonna keep playing like two street games all day. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be like one street right. checked, and you're gonna be able to know which one. Like you knew that was gonna check, check on the turn if you had the best hand. I'll yeah. tell you what they're oh. about to order bottles here. Maybe checks. <laughs> <laughs> we already <laughs> talked about all those. <laughs> to the rail. Yeah. I, hey, I think there's some people here you might be able to ask. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Can we can, can we get bottle service to the rail? Hi. <laughs> 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 we have to talk to it. Is there anyone here? Check, check. Oh, please. 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 In Jay Farber's world, there are very few no's. It's just a question of how much you're willing to spend. The nightclub host is a graduate of Santa Barbara City College, as I am, which clearly means he's destined for greatness. No, he's destined to have the best job in the world. He eats, drinks, and parties on the clock. You need a business degree for that? Plus, since poker players here like to party, he has interacted and networked with poker minds like Ben Lamb, Chance Cornet, Sam Stein, Sean Deeb, and Jesse Sylvia. And I don't think his intentions with the fake check were untoward. I think it was just a mistake that should have been called. Morgan Stern with 5-4 of spades under the gun here. Morgan Stern might be the most passive aggressor I've ever seen. A raise to 325. Farber with a big hand, two kings. By the way, I did not know until a moment ago that Tiesto has been the number one DJ in the world for the last 15 years. <laughs> I think it was Wolfman Jack before that. There's Ben Lamb, finished third place in the 2011 main event, sitting in... Farber's corner with Chance Corneth. And with the Kings, a re-raise by Jay Farber to 775. Fabian Ortiz in the small blind. What's he thinking about? Oh, yeah, queen six into the muck. And now, Sylvain Loosley in the big blind, five deuce. Yeah, what's he thinking about? He's thinking about it in French, whatever he's thinking about. He does fold. Now back to Morgan Stern. And of course, Morgan Stern is thinking of four betting. Morgan Stern, the overwhelming chip leader here on day seven of the main event, calls for 450 more. Well, hands like 5 4 suited are great to play against Farber. If you flop big, you might get some value. The flop, seven, Trey, Trey. A gut shot for Morgan Stern, and he checks. Farber says working the overnight nine to five does take a toll on you. It's like you're burning the candle on both ends. Yeah, his body looks real burnt out. <laughs> With Kings up, still a heavy favorite. A bet of 925 from Jay Farber. How deeply does Morgan Stern want to get involved here with his gut shot? Yeah, five high and a gut shot for Anton. He does give it up, and Jay Farber gets a few chips from the chip leader with his pocket kings. Bottle service to the feature table rail. <laughs> Jay Farber working on 9 million chips here on day seven of the main event. The party just starting for Jay Farber. Imagine if he goes on to win. Welcome back to Las Vegas. The nightlife such an important part of the economy here, as Jay Farber knows very well. 
What is first place money here, Lon? 8.3 million. Wow. And what do we get paid? Our reward is the joy of working this remarkable event together. I need, I need a, a raise. raise. No, I do. <laughs> All right. Featured table. Sylvain Luzli, one of the big stacks in the room. Ace nine off suit. Chips in hand. 325,000. Morgenstern gives up his button. Farber in the small blind. Two black nines. Give Farber credit. Very patient here on day seven, playing very few pots. With a pot here and there, he's over 50 big blinds. Farber's rail. Did everybody get one of those hats but us? <laughs> and there's a call from Farber for 245. Mark Newhouse now. I'm all in. And he says, all in, making a stand with ace deuce suited. Newhouse pushes with 20 big blinds left. And Lon, could you do me a favor? Go tap loosely on the shoulder and ask him to fold his hand? I mean, Newhouse pushes. Farber's playing only premium hands. What could Loosely be thinking? Sylvain Loosely is thinking, I know how to play this game, and he does fold his ace nine. Now Farber with the nines. Well, Farber knows that Newhouse knows he's playing pretty snug, so Farber's got to be worried Newhouse would only shove with a big hand, certainly bigger than ace deuce suited. A call here is for one-third of Farber's stack. And call. And a call oh. it is. And Farber in good shape to knock out Mark Newhouse. All right, here's the flop. Newhouse at risk. Jack, 10, King. Both flop straight draws, but Farber's is no good because Newhouse drawing to Broadway. The outs you see are from the player's perspective. Mark Newhouse's main event on the line. Newhouse, the short stack at this featured table, trying to become relevant yeah. once again. Turn card. Six of hearts. Farber's pocket nines remain ahead. Newhouse with one foot out the door. The river card is a queen! And Broadway for Newhouse to stay alive. Sorry, man. Boy, it hurts so much more when it comes on the river. Newhouse with the double up. And there goes your one time. Barber was this close to the knockout. You gotta make it through a day, so it yeah, resets. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get any more, right? You but get, it in November, I get a new one, yeah, right? It resets. I believe the one time executive board needs to approve that. <laughs> Why? Why the face cards? What's up, buddy? Thanks for coming out. Good to see you, bro. <laughs> Jesse's cooler than all of you because he flew all the way from Santa Barbara. <laughs> it's like Jay wanted to party till 5 a.m., but found out the club was closing at midnight. So disappointed, so close to a bigger stack. I apologize. You used your one time. Yep, that's, that's all I get. No more. I got to get it in good from now on, right? <laughs> And don't apologize, you're not sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'm that's, not. Really. That's the most brutal. <laughs> you can apologize if you're sorry, but don't say if you don't mean it. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry for saying I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. Sorry I'm not sorry. Sorry that I'm not sorry, man. I'm sorry, glad I got lucky on you. Yeah. Still alive. Okay, glad we got that cleared up. Newhouse now with 6.8 million, Farber 5.4 million. The current payout, anything but sorry, over 285 grand. It does pale in comparison to the top three spots to be awarded live on ESPN in November. Fabian Ortiz rocking the vest. I don't expect that to catch on and replace the hoodie. <laughs> well, the vest folds. Now the hoodie, loosely, gets out of the way. Morgenstern gives way to Farber who has ace king of clubs. Fun fact for you, the last hand of poker President Truman played at his weekly game on April 10, 1951, before firing General MacArthur the next morning was ace king suited. A raise to 330,000 from the ace king suited here. Mark Newhouse now on the button with pocket fours. I got worried for a second when you grabbed all the chips. Yeah. What's going on here? Got to get it over the whole card can. Newhouse just got those chips. He should savor them. Well, savor means different things to different people. 
<laughs> He's going back into the line of fire. <laughs> Re raised to 730,000 with the small pocket pair. Tran folds a small blind. And McKeel Brummelhouse, the big, now back to Farber. Incidentally, Farber once asked me to be his personal trainer, but I told him I didn't think I could do anything for him. <laughs> Gotta love Ace King suited pre flop, right? Farber with a couple of braced winners in his corner, and Lamb and Corneth, I'm sure, did not teach him to fold Ace King suited pre flop. Farber with a big stack of lavender, four bets to over two million. Well, I like Newhouse's re raise, but now with Farber four betting it, I'm not sure Newhouse likes his small pocket pair anymore. Newhouse gives up the pocket fours, and Jay Good Farber's pre-flop aggression with a suited ace king works to his favor. Yeah, sometimes when you take a big pot you don't deserve and then play another pot with the same guy, you give up a little more easily because you feel bad. Jay Farber experiencing all the highs and lows of the main event. We'll see if that pot gets him back on track. That's the bracelet that awaits the 2013 World Series of Poker main event champion. This is a real bracelet. You know, I never wear my other bracelet. I, I was like just a regular one like the other ones. But I think that who wins this event deserves to have this. Wow. At least I have it now. <laughs> Can I keep it? <laughs> When Carlos won his main event bracelet in 2001, he says it was all old school poker. Now it's new school poker and everyone plays a lot better, he says. Folded to Carlos at the secondary table. 7-5 of clubs, new school poker, <laughs> raised to 360,000. Livingston on the button with a weak ace. Alex Livingston thinking about it. He's been pretty quiet lately, but he does fold to the small blind. Mark Etienne McLaughlin, Jack Nine suited. He first played poker on a ping pong table with friends. That's curious. I first played ping pong on a poker table mm. with friends. <laughs> McLaughlin starting the hand with over 10 million makes the call. When they play poker on a ping pong table, do they keep the net up? That's a tough one. I would hope not. Heads up, McLaughlin, Mortensen. Two hands in need of help. Here's the flop. 10-10 jack. Mark Etienne with jacks up. Very little in that flop for Mortensen. McLaughlin, though, checks. Carlos is old school, but in his old school, he was always aggressive and unpredictable. And the pre-flop razor continues with a bet of 500,000. And once again, we see Mortensen playing from behind, but in position and applying pressure. Now McLaughlin knows he's got the jack, but does Carlos have the 10? There's a call. As you mentioned, Carlos very comfortable in his post-flop play. Turn card, king of diamonds, misses both. You know, when you play poker on a ping pong table, if you tap your racket four times on the table, that is not a check. <laughs> That's a check from McLaughlin. Now Mortensen drawing dead. Yeah, Carlos doesn't want to go to showdown with this hand. And here comes the second barrel from Carlos, a million seventy-five thousand. Carlos playing a seven kicker with the board. <laughs> my name is Carlito Mortensen. You killed my father. Prepare to die. McLaughlin prepares to fold, and Carlos prepares to stack the chips into tenth place overall with eight and a half million. Mortensen schools. Old schools, that is. McLaughlin on that hand. McLaughlin's still healthy, but this is not a time to be handing out poker chips. So Carlos Mortensen can win old school. He can win new school. A very serious threat in this main event still. To the outer table to catch up with Yevgeny Temeshenko. His pair of tens has a slight edge after the turn. Jan Naklatl, a 24-year-old student and online player from Czech Republic, is open-ended with a flush draw. Tomashenko checked. Naklatl checks as well. River card, seven of spades, hits Naklatl both ways, straight and flushes come on the river. Tomashenko was soaring earlier in this main event, but he has cooled off considerably. 
Evgeny checks again. The kid wearing plaid, like fellow Czech Martin Stashko. I knew he started a plaid explosion in Trinic and beyond. Naglottel started the hand with over 6.3 million, looking for more here. Bet 700,000. Small bet, about four to one on a call for Evgeny. But every chip now precious to Timoshenko. He's down to two and a half million. Just 15 big blinds. Ukraine, Czech Republic matchup here on the river. Tymoshenko lives in Seattle. He is a US citizen, but prefers to fly the Ukrainian flag next to his name. And Yevgeny gives it up. Nakhlato will take that pot. TV crew, let's see the hand. So Yevgeny Tymoshenko yeah, yeah. giving yeah, yeah. up chips down to just 2,500,000 and seems to be some table interest in seeing Jan's cards. I'll give you 100 bucks to see it. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, on my pocket, right now. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can grab them back. I'll match it. They haven't hit the muck yet. I'll, I'll match it. For one card? For one card? Yeah. 200 for two. 200 for one two. Card. What's a used carpet salesman? She had 300 for two. They want to see Jan's cards. Wait, yeah, yeah. 200 for two. Which one? Oh. I'll, I'll add 100. You gotta show two. The Jack of Spades and Timoshenko now content that he made the correct laydown. So it was a good fold from Timoshenko, but right now, little consolation. He needs chips fast or his main event run will be over. Tonight's Bracelet Moments are presented by PokerNews.com. $1,000 buy-in No Limit Hold'em events were popular again this summer as massive fields made dreams come true for five young men. 28-year-old pro Matt Waxman. 24-year-old Taylor Parr. 26-year-old South Carolina pro Chris Dombrowski. 24-year-old Belgian Michael Gaffey and 22-year-old Hungarian Norbert Sechi. None of those five bracelet winners cashed in this year's main event, but this leaderboard way past that stage. Anton Morgenstern with a seven million chip lead, 22 players left. And with Steve G knocked out, Argentinian Fabian Ortiz in sixth place, the oldest player left at 44. All still gunning for that top prize of over 8.3 million. Bruno Kawauch from Brazil. 110th last year, top 22 this year, wow. He folds to Chris Lind, King Jack of Clubs. And see, take off the hoodie and he almost looks like a respectable wow. ex-investment banker. Does look like a brand new guy, a raise to 360,000, well that's the good old Chris Lind. Brian Reese folds, as does Castelluccio on the button. Carlos Mortensen, Matador, seven six of diamonds. Carlos making a habit of playing so-so hands in position against big stacks. He must trust his post-flop play. There's a call of 360,000. Alex Livingston with a tough seat next to Mortensen, ace nine. Livingston once posted online a guide to live poker, which included attitude and etiquette. He is wise beyond his years. He does fold the ace nine. Big blind Mark Etienne McLaughlin with nine eight of diamonds. Just another 200,000 from the big blind. McLaughlin's gonna play. He's getting five and a half to one. He might even give us a squeeze play re-raise. Nope, just a call. He might give us a call. <laughs> so three players, Mortensen, McLaughlin, and Lind. Nice matchup. Here is the flop. Eight, seven, King. That spreads the joy. Middle pair for McLaughlin, top pair for Lind, bottom pair for Mortensen. Let me explain something to you, Lon. Each paired a different card on the flop. The odds of three players holding six different cards, each pairing one of their cards on the flop, is approximately... A Approximately, it's a lot. I don't know what it is to one. <laughs> As Antonio would say, it's tough to make a pair and hold them. Not here. 675 from McLaughlin. McLaughlin with middle pair, Lind with top pair. Top pair with just a call. Mortensen with bottom pair, Lon. Post flop radar says fold. Good radar. Heads up now, McLaughlin and Lind. Lind with the best of it, with top pair. Queen misses both. 
And if I were the fourth player in this hand line, I would have paired my whole card <laughs> on the turn. And been way behind, as you often are. Check, check. Another eight trip eights for McLaughlin. McLaughlin has trips, Lon, but Lynn doesn't know it. Third spade on board, too. Mark Etienne. With a million call. four hundred thousand, a quick call from Lind. Kings up, no good. The trips for McLaughlin will take it. That's an I lost on the river expression. So Mark Etienne McLaughlin with 77 big blinds now into sixth place. Chris Lind still strong in second place with over 17 million. Damn rivers. McLaughlin seems to have Chris Lynn's number for the moment. Lynn didn't think McLaughlin got there, but he did. The river sends a pot in a different direction. The hoodie may be coming back on. Bust of Chris Moneymaker overlooking the featured table. Can't believe it's been 10 years since he won it all. Well, it's been 12 years since Carlos Mortensen won it all. How come you believe that? Dran, ace, tray, off. Fabian Ortiz and his vest. King eight of hearts. He was going to be an accountant, became a DJ, loves disco from the 1970s and early 80s, which means both of us are KC and the Sunshine Band guys. <laughs> what? Go on, go on. Hey, Ortiz wants to play. He'll make the call for 325 on the button. Sylvain Luzli, 10-9 off. Just 10-9 off. Luzli definitely lives up to his name, huh? <laughs> he does indeed. There's the call. Morgan Stern folds to Farber in the big blind pocket fives. A re-raise from the big blind here would blow out all these crumb bums and shoe clerks. Does Farber have it in him? Nope. Call for 165 more. Well, Farber playing the VIP host there, being nice to everybody. Four-way jump ball over half. The players at the table will see this flop. Nine king ace. Wow, everyone has a pair now. Farber with a pocket pair on the other three in the hand, also paired up on this flop. Farber checks. Now Tran with top pair with a bad kicker. It looks like JC is going to bet the best hand. Well, maybe the best player betting with the best hand. 540,000. Now a second pair, Ortiz. In his spare time, Ortiz likes to read metaphysics. I don't know much about metaphysics, but it should tell him he's got a weak hand here with two players behind him. Well, he called pre-flop with his king eight of hearts. And he calls here with second pair. And now Luz Lee with bottom pair. Luz Lee has a master's in business. He doesn't know from metaphysics. <laughs> Give me some numbers. Let me work them out. And I'll take care of the rest. A lot of action getting to Luz Lee. Oh, look at this. Loose Lee with bottom pair raises to a million six fifty. Well, if you're gonna play loosely, you might as well play aggressively. <laughs> and see now here, the great J.C. Tran left with the weak ace with a call and raise of his bet. I think he mucks it. Farber already mucked his pocket fives, and Tran gives up his weak ace. Ortiz now, like Tran, Ortiz now having second thoughts. But Ortiz now with the best hand after Tran folded. And he mucks, and Sylvan loosely will take it with a confident raise. Well played. Yeah, good play from Sylvan, but frankly, and stop me if I've said this before, the hoodie is no match for male pattern baldness. <laughs> loosely adding to his stack. All right. To the outer table, Yevgeny Temeshenko has shoved his short stack with a weak ace. He's in danger of elimination at the dominating hand of Jan Nakhlatl. <laughs> This is a three beverage all in for Timoshenko's last 13 big blinds. All right, here's the flop. Yevgeny at risk. And Yevgeny sees more trouble. Knock Lotto catches top two. Timoshenko now on the precipice. Turn card. Yes, I want a king. Is a king, and that actually helps Yevgeny's hopes to stay alive. He can chop it. Yeah, he can't win the pot, but Timoshenko can chop it and stick around with a river king or queen. Big. Use, use the river card, use. another jack. Knock Lottles, jacks full of aces. Will be the winner and will be the last hand Yevgeny Timoshenko plays at this main event. Sad to see a great player bust, but this main event is back on track to end on time now. 
22nd place for Yevgeny Timoshenko. The man known as Jovial Gent goes out quietly after making a lot of noise in this year's main event. Look, Nakalotl rocks the plaid, Lon. A student from Czech Republic now nearing 10 million. Anton Morgenstern still in his familiar perch atop the leaderboard loosely in third, Tran and fourth. I hate to beat the same drum, but to the aggressors go the spoils. The aggressive Morgenstern, Lind, and loosely atop the field right now. David Benefield started day seven, 27th out of 27. He's moved up nicely to 18th with 21 remaining. Very impressive from the 27-year-old online master, but he still has only 22 big blinds. A lot of work left. The bottom three include Michigan State grad Ryan Reese, the beast. They all need to become beasts in a hurry. And Yevgeny Timoshenko is out of the main event, a uh, former WPT champion. You've gone deep in so many events. You have titles. Does it hurt more to bust out of the main event than anything else? Absolutely. There's no other tournament like this. And even making just the final table would have probably been my biggest poker accomplishment. I really think I fought hard. I did everything I could. And fortunately, uh, I just had the second best hand one too many times in the last, uh, in the last few levels. I, I'd, I'd love to have another deep run in this next year, but you know, it's, it's not always in my hands. You have Genny Timoshenko out of the main event here on day seven. For 22-year-old German Anton Morgenstern, day six and seven accumulation has taken on an accelerated pace. Right now I'm just in shock, like I didn't really expect it. My goal was to run deep in the tournament and win a bracelet, but it's always different when it actually happens. With momentum and a huge stack, this might be Morgan Stern's tournament to lose. Seriously, you're playing that for value? Yeah. It looks like crazy. What country are you from? Germany. It's just my day. Right now on my table, I'm feeling really happy because I'm winning pots and people are scared to bust out. And I think I have good momentum on the table right now. Sure, there are very real obstacles in JC Tran, Carlos Mortensen, and others, but none have the ammunition that Morgan Stern has. I'm definitely in a good position right now. I'm still the chip leader. Nobody on my table is really somebody I'm intimidated by. Day seven of the main event continues with Anton Morgenstern leading the way. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that bite? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Main event, day seven. Welcome back to the Rio in Las Vegas. The World Series of Poker main event nearing its conclusion. So much at stake right now for the competitors and their rails. $8.3 million for first. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. Texan James Alexander in position for the final table. Born in McAllen, lives in Edinburgh. He's trying to put the Texas back in No Limit Texas Hold'em. We followed a one main event champ, Carlos Mortensen, from the start, and he's still here. Why wouldn't he still be here? He booked the Rio for seven nights, and he doesn't want to get charged for early checkout. Former investment banker Chris Land currently in second. If he wins the main event, he could open the bank of insanity. 21 players remaining in the field, three tables of seven on top. 22-year-old German Anton Morgan Stern stacked at 24 and a half million. Two-time bracelet winner J.C. Tran in fourth, making the best of his sixth main event cash. Places 10 through 18, trying to work their way into the final nine, including David Benefield. This is his second top 100 main event finish. Same goes for the two-time bracelet winner, Rep Porter. The bottom three with some work to do, especially Ryan Reese, the beast. And there's the other bracelet winner left in the field, Amir Lehavut. There's the chip leader, Anton Morgenstern. His rise to the top has caught everyone off guard. He should be called Anton Morgenstern, the beast. But, well, it really doesn't rhyme. <laughs> You friends with Brandon Crawford? Yeah. He just tweeted me and said, you two play nice now. <laughs> <laughs> or I guess he probably tweeted both of us. I, yeah. I think he did. I haven't checked my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Newhouse and Jay Farber with some small talk on this very big stage. A lot of chips at this featured table, but Farber under 40 big blinds. Clearly, he hits the gym a lot. Time to give his chips a workout. Frenchman Sylvain Lusley has the second biggest stack behind Morgenstern. The key there behind Morgenstern. Lusley should be content to play tight. He's got a monster to his left. Three chip denominations in play currently. The most active chip, the 100K Lavender. A stack of 20 of those worth $2 million. Loose Lee looks down at pocket aces. 
26-year-old French pro with a raise to 325. Morgan Stern now on the button, the chip leader. 8-7 off. He's been experimenting with different diets, vegan for a while, and then he went to a plant-heavy diet with some juicing. And now it's a steady diet of super aggro play on the button. <laughs> Just started playing live poker a couple of years ago. A re-raise to 850 from Morgan Stern. Back to loosely now as the blinds fold. I warned Sylvan about Anton, but he has the proper tools to deal with the big stack bully in this hand. Ways 1.8. And he says re-raise. He makes it a million eight. We talk often about shifting fortunes when big hand meets big hand. This is just big hand versus eight seven. And of course, Anton could just take his 850,000 chip loss and move on with his other 23 million chips. Morgan Stern is not moving on a lot of those lavender chips, Norman. Wow. He repops it to 3.8 million. Lana takes a special maniacal chip leader to five bed with eight seven off. I think we're safe here, Lon, but we might want to seek cover. Good morning. <laughs> With the aces, Lucy says all in. And Morgan Stern has to give it up. Lucy with a huge pot. The bad timing award already been decided for this hour. This guy's got a different way of saying folding every hand. Ooh. Your boy. <laughs> if Anton does that five more times, goodbye. Big Stack's got to play bully, but sometimes they get caught. Seven players also at our secondary table, ranging from Chris Lynn's 17 million to Ryan Reese's short stack of two and a half million. Carlos Mortensen looking for a second main event title, folds to Canadian poker player, restaurant owner Alex Livingston with pocket fives. Yeah, he owns a pizzeria in Toronto called North of Brooklyn. Says it's a hipster type place, which is his way of telling me not to come. And that raise to 320 is almost 10% of Livingston's short stack. Now on Bruno Kawauch from Brazil, ace 10. Kawauch starting the hand with 9.3 million. Well, he didn't come all the way from Brazil to play ace 10 off. I guess not. Folded to the button. And there is Chris Lind with two black sevens. Chris calls himself a professional clubber. And even with these grueling poker days here at the main event, he's been going out afterward. I would not recommend that. He re-raises to 530,000. I guess when you're young, you can do anything you want. But, but Lynn's 30 now, Lon. I'm told that's not young anymore. Yeah, turned 30 just before the World Series. He's got to slow down. Sergio Castelluccio in the big blind. Ace five off. Well, I don't think Castelluccio came all the way from Italy to play ace five off. Nope, folded back to Livingston with a pocket fives. And pretty short stack, but he just makes the call with the lesser pocket pair. So a big stack versus a short stack. Jack, ace, jack. Status quo after that flop. Livingston, second best. He checks. I believe Chris Lind is trying out for the Pro Beach Volleyball Tour when this <laughs> event is over. He does have that look, doesn't he? Lind. That's 680,000 with his pair of sevens. All in. And look at this. Livingston check raises all in, and he gets Lind to fold. Wow, it was risky. But the check raise shove works for Alex Livingston. Wow. Livingston gets the big stack to back down. But Lind still with the big stack after that. Still with 100 big blinds. Nice hand. Thank you. Raising all in and winning beats selling $20 pizzas to a bunch of hipsters. In the first two hands tonight, we've seen the two top stacks lose chips. In the case of Anton Morgenstern, a classic case of chip leader stubbornness. Yes, that aggression is what got him here. But at some point, Norman, you have to ease off the gas, no? Well, my father's first rule of driving is always make the other guy break. Anton Morgenstern is probably used to the Autobahn, so he doesn't ease off the gas either. In fact, full speed ahead got him here, and maybe full speed ahead will take him all the way. But as someone who doesn't mind going 45 when the speed limit's 65, I would tell Anton he might want to change gears on occasion to reach poker's ultimate destination. You don't get knocked out now. You still walk away with 285 grand, but there are huge pay raises ahead for those who find a way to hang on, including the top prize of 8.3 million. Sylvan Loosely at our feature table, ace four. It's a weak ace. Don't waste our time. <laughs> He's got over a million in online earnings. I'm not sure he got there with a weak ace. 325 is the raise. Morgan Stern with pocket eights. Morgan Stern plays like a maniac, but he seems like he's just sitting at Walden Pond contemplating his navel. <laughs> a re-raise to 850 with the eights. Now Newhouse with ace-queen in the big blind. 
182nd at the 2011 main event. I'm all in. And Mark in. shoves his whole stack, almost five and a half million with Ace Queen. Newhouse pushing with 35 big blinds left. And I told the weak ace not to waste our time. And the weak ace folds. Now Morgan Stern with the pocket eights. Anton is almost never up against a smaller pair here. So the question is, if he's flipping, is it worth 4.6 million more? That's a big number. Okay. Morgan Stern will try to send Newhouse to the showers. Okay. Mark with the ace queen. Morgan Stern with the eights. Newhouse was all in with ace deuce against Jay Farber's pocket nines earlier on day seven. In better shape this time, but behind and needing help again. There's the flop and a queen for Newhouse to take a huge step towards survival. And Newhouse nodded at that flop because he knew the queen was coming line. <laughs> Oh, boy. Now Morgenstern less concerned with the knockout, more focused on his suddenly evaporating chip stack. Seven on the turn keeps Newhouse ahead. They, they wove a black three across when he has two of them. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's got two black threes. Morgenstern needs an eight to knock out Mark Newhouse. The river card, another seven. A nice double up for Newhouse, who now sits Thank with you. more than 11 million on the other side of that coin. Anton Morgenstern, whose stack has been depleted by almost 10 million chips in just two hands. So as the star of Morgenstern begins to fall, Mark Newhouse picks up the pieces. Newhouse now in the seventh place after a win with Ace Queen. That is the bracelet everyone talks about. It comes with $8.3 million and legend status in the poker world. At the only outer table, James Alexander under the hat, under the gun, raised it up with 10-9. It's come around to Max Double X Coleman with Queen 10 suited, and he has made the call. Here is the flop. Queen King 8, Coleman with a pair of queens. Alexander a gut shot. Alexander and Coleman both check to see the five on the turn. Coleman's still best. He checks. As does Alexander. River is a jack. Alexander gets a free ride and hits pay dirt with a straight. The 23-year-old Richita Pro has checked his way into the jaws of defeat. Two main event rookies enjoying a very deep run here. And that's a bet of 340 from Coleman. Well, Coleman checked twice and let Alexander get there. And now Coleman bets he could be Norman Chad's school of poker material. <laughs> yeah, I don't think second pair is going to cut it. Uh, race to 900,000. Alexander looks more confident than Coleman at the moment. I have a deep understanding of the human condition, Lon. <laughs> That's why we pay you the big bucks. Max Coleman. Oh, chips in hand, but those are just worth 5K each. Awesome. Uses nice hand. He wisely retreats. Alexander will accept the winnings. Coleman knows Alexander is basically never bluffing there. James up to 14.2 million. We've learned a lot about this Texan throughout the main event, so we decided to learn a little more about his bar in the Lone Star State. What is a flying walrus? I have no clue. When we settled on Flying Walrus, the main reason we did it, just saying the name, it, it evokes a smile in conversation. The reason I opened a bar is because I didn't know better. Shouldn't open a bar and talk anybody out of it. But I, I think it's just, it's very much who I am. I, I like to mingle with people, I like to talk, I like to keep things interesting. Well, that was my brother. James Alexander is a beast. When he gets involved with something like he did here with the Flying Walrus, he's gonna put his entire mind, his entire heart, and everything he's got into this business. My brother was very supportive. If you need something, he's there. He's gonna help you out. He's gonna get involved. He's a great guy. To my entire life, I never did a whole lot right, but I did save whatever little bit of money I could, so I took what I had saved up, and I put it into this bar to put it in with James. And what he's done for me has been amazing. My brother got um, 109th in his first try in the World Series. And Alexander will take that pot. And Alexander shows his kings. I'm not always bluffing. <laughs> he had everybody and their mother rooting him on. Between James and I, it's hard to say who the better poker player is. I am blessed to have a very good family. We all care about each other. I'm blessed in every, every sense of the word. James' regular home game included his brother Dwayne, 2012 Octo Niner Rob Salaburo, and 2006 main event final tables Richard Lee. Basically, in that home game, if you don't make a deep run in the main event, you're the fish. At the secondary table, Mark Etienne McLaughlin just re-raised Carlos Mortensen. The Canadian McLaughlin is the one dominated here, though, with his queen-jack against Mortensen's king-queen. 
Carlos, the only player to win the World Series main event and the WPT championship. Carlos has that main event championship and a limit hold'em bracelet here at the World Series, and he's going to call for 460 more. And it's McLaughlin in need of help on the flop here. And the flop is six ace queen. Carlos's kicker keeps the advantage with him. Carlos checks. McLaughlin 30th at the 09 main event, 86th at the 2011 main event, and now a top 25 finish. My goodness. No hearts in that flop for McLaughlin, who bet 710,000. I've got to say, if he's the matador, he ought to wear bolder colors. Exactly. You have to attract the danger to you. That's how they live. That's how their blood rushes through their veins. There's a call. Turn card now. Mortensen. Big advantage. Some chop possibilities, though, as you see by the percentages. Five of spades on the turn. Carlos checks again. French Canadian checks as well. River card, eight of spades. Carlos's hand is best. But they're wary of that ace, it seems. There's a check again. Why don't they just open a check, check gift shop? I don't know why they have chips. No one's betting. Neither can be too comfortable with their holdings. Check, check. Mortensen will take it with the king kicker. That hand is already out of my headline. I have erased it from my memory bank. <laughs> Carlos Mortensen upping his stack to over $9 million now after taking some chips from Mark Etienne McLaughlin, the bigger stack. McLaughlin read it well, but for Carlos, even a small pot worth a lot here on day seven. A unique perspective of the Las Vegas Strip. Back inside at the outer table, David Benefield enjoying his 13th World Series cash. He just turned Kings up to overtake Ohio Poker Pro Matt Reed's pair of aces. Reed checked the turn. Benefield with a bet of 900,000. Benefield was winning three to four hundred dollars a day online as a freshman at TCU. I believe they are the Horned Frogs. You, you don't know anything. No. He, he dropped out. Eventually returned to TCU, but then left again, moved to Las Vegas for a while, and now he's at Columbia University studying political science and Chinese. Reed with top pair, which is no good, does make the call. Reed started the hand with almost twice the stack of Benefield. River card, deuce of spades, brings a third spade to the playing field. Benefield 73rd at the 2008 main event. Reed 89th at the 2010 main event. Reed checks. Benefield's been nursing a short stack all of day seven. Come on. David now looking for the instant double up. You're going to do that? I didn't know he was going to do that. I never know anything. <laughs> well, at this stage of the main event, these guys have played with each other for a while. It, it becomes so much about the read you have on your opponent. Six in there. Matt Reed in fold mode. Yeah, he gives it up. And that is a good pot for David Benefield now. Yeah, Benefield now pretty much even stacked with Reed. Yeah, David now up to five and a half million. 34 big blinds, very workable for that pro for this pro. 5.6 million trying to turn his fortunes around. Let's go down right now to Kara Scott for a report on the man also known as Raptor 517. David Benefield started day seven at the very bottom of the chip counts, but as we're losing players, he's still in the mix and working his way up out of the danger zone. David is an online poker legend who actually gave up playing full time in order to become a kind of modern day renaissance man. He's exploring other parts of life like coaching baseball, learning Mandarin, he's investing in startups, and he's gone back to school to study a wide variety of topics. And as such a well-respected figure in online poker, it's no surprise that he's also an executive producer on a new doc documentary feature film called Bet Race Fold, celebrating the roller coaster ride of the online poker boom. Well, boom is not the word we would use to describe this hour of Anton Morgenstern's poker life. He's taken some serious blows to his chip stack here with Ace Jack of Clubs, a raise to 325. The name of Anton's poker movie is just Rays. <laughs> exactly. Mark Newhouse on the button with pocket deuces makes the call. JC Tran in the big blind folds as does McKeel Brimmelhaus. With Morgan Stern spewing chips, no reason for Newhouse not to play a pot against him in position. These two clashing again. Here's the flop. Oh, my goodness! Deuces full for Newhouse. 
while Morgan Stern flops trip aces. That's a flop like they used to make them a lot before everything got digitized. <laughs> no slow play from Morgan Stern with his trips, 425. Yeah, if you're Anton, nobody ever thinks you have a hand, so when he does have a hand, he's going to push with it. But Newhouse has the hammer with a full boat. Yeah, and if Newhouse knew Anton had an ace, he'd be twerking at the table. <laughs> Newhouse has had Morgan Stern's number today. This could get very, very ugly. Just a call from Newhouse. Turn card, tray of hearts. No threat really to Morgan Stern's hand. From his mind, at least. He continues to lead out, and why not? 750. Newhouse loves it, and he's wondering how to proceed to get the most chips out of this pot. Mark Newhouse with the flop of his main event. And now he pounces, a raise to two million. Newhouse waits no longer, and boy, he's got Morgan Stern with the perfect hand to carry on and lose more chips. Anton wondering why would Newhouse raise here? Maybe a stronger ace, but that's unlikely. And it looks like he sees no good reason for that raise as he re-raises to 3.9 million. This pot is swelling, and we're not nearly done yet. Friends of Mark Newhouse wondering what their man has gotten himself into here. But Newhouse certainly knows. How much more can he get from Anton? All in. He all says in. All, in. all in. Well, now alarms have to go off in Anton's head. Newhouse willing to risk it all. What can Anton beat? And a call here would be for more than half of Anton's remaining stack. And a call wow. it is. And a stunning turn of events. One card from reality. No emotion from Anton, but he's got to be dazed and distressed. Morgan Stern can still... Bust Newhouse here with an ace, jack, or three. But Newhouse won card from 22 million chips, and the main event lead, the river card, the four of clubs. Newhouse completes another double up through Morgenstern. But Morgenstern had 29 million chips earlier on day seven. He now has five million, and Newhouse now has the most chips in the room. What'd you say about this guy? <laughs> Mark Newhouse cannot contain his excitement. He's got to get out of his seat, as does Morgan Stern, now one of the short stacks here on day seven. I have so hard for Bauer. I wanted. How can this then happen? Mark Newhouse, the main event chip leader. I know. What is he doing? Can he not even wait until AK so plays, or? I thought I might be behind. I thought he might have ace three. The word epic is overused, but Morgan Stern's collapse is reaching epic proportions. Mark Newhouse, your new main event chip leader. I know, what's he doing? I thought I might be behind. Mark Newhouse's chip stack looking a little different now. He seems primed for a spot at the November 9. At the secondary feature table, one player now trying to catch Newhouse is Mark Etienne McLaughlin, who started taking risks at a young age. Since I was a little kid, I already start gamble, uh, playing uh, with other kids. We gamble uh, any stuffs, and business is just a big gamble. So I, I, I start gambling, f see what it works, see what, does, what doesn't work, and yeah, it's, I like it. A typical day for McLaughlin, he goes online and checks on his businesses, opens up the stock charts, goes to the gym and works out, then plays poker online. And with pocket aces? He will raise 325 from the button. Kawauch folds to Chris Lind in the big blind, 9-8 off. A typical day for Lind. Wakes up at 2 in the afternoon, <laughs> goes home, then tries to figure out which clubs he'll go to that night. <laughs> He's got a twin brother named Alex who plays a little poker, not quite as successfully as Chris. Lind will make the call here from the big blind. Heads up the two big guns at this table. 10-6-6, two hearts. Lind with a gut shot. McLaughlin with aces up. Check to McLaughlin. No free cards for any aces cracking wannabes. 410,000. Lind makes the call. Lind calling the flop, hoping to hit, but also perhaps he can steal it if McLaughlin slows down or if a heart comes. Trey of diamonds on the turn. No help to Lind, who checks again. Lind, another big stack splashing around unnecessarily. 
but he's a splasher by nature. McLaughlin not going to slow down, it appears. That is 875,000. As I mentioned, Mark Etienne not slowing down. A heart didn't come on the turn, so maybe Lynn's just thinking about having Jay Farber hook him up at Hakkasan tonight. <laughs> Chris Lynn taking his time, finally does fold. McLaughlin will take that pot with the pocket aces. And Lind still in the top five, but disappointed. Got to keep the big picture in mind. Nobody can win the main event here on day seven, but you know, there's a lot of value just making the November nine. Clean living pays off, though I still can't figure out how a tattoo artist like McLaughlin can be as clean as a whistle. All right, let's go from that table to the outer table. Two big hands clashing. Max Coleman just flopped bottom set, but Matt Reed just flopped middle set. Oh, five. Oh, jeez. Medic to table 374. Medic to table 374. No reason to wait for actual blood to be spilled. Let's get over there right now because we can see it coming. Reed with the raise to a million and a quarter. Coleman has him out chipped by about a million six. Coleman, Coleman shoves. I call. Reed calls all in. Reed at risk, but this is for most of Coleman's stack. Coleman can't believe it. Reed says, I finally get lucky. Set over set kills off more young poker stacks than anything else out there. Max Coleman, the Wichita pro, still shaking his head at his misfortune. Eight of clubs puts a straight draw on the board. So with a River 10, they would chop it. Only the last seven in the deck would knock out Reed. River card is the queen of clubs. No relief to Coleman. A set of her set, double up for Matt Reed. Yeah, no offense to Kansas, but it feels like Ohio should win pots like that. I'll explain why in the director's cut. A crushing blow to Coleman. He'll part with more than three quarters of his chips. Reed now among the top nine with nearly 11 million. Back at the secondary table, we get another look at Mark Etienne McLaughlin now, a French-Canadian living in Montreal. Mark Etienne, a tattoo artist with a couple of impressive businesses on the side, and always uh, friends with 2010 main event champ Jonathan Duhamel. Nice kid, but I hate the double underscore in his Twitter handle. You got to tell people, go underscore, Irish underscore, go. Jeez, it's easier to send a message in a bottle. <laughs> Mark Etienne with seven tray of spades in the cutoff. And he wants to play. A raise to 325. McLaughlin now with a little Morgan Stern-itis, Linsanity-itis. The Brazilian pro, Kawa Uch, folds 9-8. Chris Lind gives up his small blind. Ryan Reese in the big blind from East Lansing, Michigan, now lives in Las Vegas. Two jacks. He used to deal for fellow Michigan State grad in November 9, bubble boy Dean Hambrick at his charity poker room. Ryan says dealing helped him play better poker. A 23-year-old with a big pocket pair and a shorter stack. And a re-raise to 765. He raises it 440,000. McLaughlin's cards are so bad, I don't know if he could withstand a 450,000 chip raise, but you know, 440 he might be able to handle. <laughs> and 440 is what he can handle. He wants to play. So heads up, the Jacks and the seven tray of spades. Four king 10, two spades. Reese is still best with the Jacks. McLaughlin flops a flush draw. Reese with a bachelor's degree in hospitality business, hopes to manage or own a casino one day. He is wary of something and checks. McLaughlin also studied business in college, hopes to have a tattoo one day. They both check eight of spades, and just like that, it's a spade flush for McLaughlin. Wow. It's the jack of clubs, not the jack of spades, son. And that's the Jack of Diamonds. You know, that's why I always write down my whole cards on a piece of paper so I don't forget them. <laughs> wow, from meager holdings, McLaughlin turns the flush. Reese checks. You see, McLaughlin didn't even check his whole cards again. He remembered he had spades. He doesn't sit on it, 900,000. 900,000. And now Reese. Drawn dead. Wondering what this French Canadian is up to. Drawn dead. Yeah. Say goodbye to that 900,000. Yeah, pocket jacks find yet another way to lose chips. It's amazing. River card, nine of spades, another spade. Could make things interesting. 
Ryan Reese with just the pocket jacks. But wow, getting busy. Wow, are you serious? A million, 325. Well, that's seemingly a perfect card for Reese to bluff at, given McLaughlin's hand. And Reese with the right idea, it looks as if McLaughlin already is convinced the Beast has a, a big spade in his hand. McLaughlin now just playing the seven of spades is squirming. McLaughlin rooms with Yevgeny Timoshenko in the offseason. <laughs> well, he's not the Hollywood type. He's really thinking about a call. Back in a moment. Welcome back. Mark Etienne McLaughlin turned a flush holding the seven tray of spades, but a fourth spade hit the board on the river, prompting Ryan Reese to bluff at it, putting McLaughlin into the tank. McLaughlin's been thinking about this one nearly three minutes. The average tattoo takes about 15 minutes to an hour, depending on design. <laughs> McLaughlin has really been put to the test by young Ryan Reese here. I call. He oh. makes the call, reckless call. or brilliance. It doesn't really matter. McLaughlin will win it. Good call. A gutsy play by Reese. Gutsy call by McLaughlin. Something just didn't add up, like being a tattoo artist and not having any visible tattoos. <laughs> the best poker content on the internet. Your super high rollerball seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Anton Morgenstern's chips are still in first place, but those chips are now in the stack of Mark Newhouse. Still 21 players in the field. And I'm still stunned by Morgenstern's swift fall from the top. First he tried to be the bully, then he didn't get away from a hand against Mark Newhouse that cost him most of his stack. The blinds are up to 100,000, 200,000, a 30,000 chip Andy McLaughlin wants to stay busy with 7-6 off and a raise to 400,000. And that puts the pinch once again on Bruno Kawauch. He folds. Uh-oh. When Lynn puts the hoodie on, I think he takes on his more natural super aggro alter ego. Ace 10 for Lynn in the small blind. Lynn's played four straight main events, made four straight day threes, but 2013 is his first main event cash. And he's seen McLaughlin is willing to play less than premium hands, as he is, and that's a re-raise to a million 175. Well, Lynn playing big stack poker with not quite as big of a big stack as before. He's queen for Reese. Reese short stack all in for two and a quarter million gets rid of McLaughlin. Eleven big blinds left for Reese. Lind can't like it much, but he's getting four to one on a call, and it's for less than ten percent of his stack. Mm, I call. Yeah, it is a cheap call for Lind, and he has Reese at risk, but Reese in good shape here for the double up. Let's go. Yeah, Reese has him dominated and lets his rail know. So Chris Lynn looking to get lucky to add to his stack to shorten the field. Ryan Reese trying to double up with Ace Queen. Two, three, four of hearts. Two, three, four of hearts. Here's the flop. Nine trade deuce. Reese still good. The odds just got longer for Lynn. Yeah, Reese has got to like it. The two rails are side by side, making it easier for you if you want to switch sides. <laughs> Turn card, jack of clubs. Reese still good. One card from his double up. Now split the difference. Only a 10 knocks out Reese the Beast. The river card, another jack. Yes. And Reese will keep his seat. Yeah, Reese still only with 25 big blinds, but it feels darn good. It feels like a brand new tournament for Ryan Reese. He picks up almost three million in that last hand for Chris Lynn. Well, he may have to mind his P's and Q's a little closer going forward. He does sit in eighth place, though. A deep run at the main event can have a big impact on any player. Ryan Reese spoke to us about how his life is changing already. It honestly hasn't hit me yet. Like on Facebook and Twitter, it's just blowing up. Like so many new followers and friends and all my friends and family are watching and cheering me on. And it hasn't hit me that like it's the biggest poker tournament in the world yet, really. It probably will afterward, but I'm just trying to stay focused and relaxed and take it one day at a time. He 
you started playing poker in eighth grade with friends in the basement? Always the basement, Lon. Why not the dining room or the back porch? <laughs> Chris Lind with pocket aces here. He can use pocket aces right about now. Indeed. 425 is the raise from Lind. Ryan Reese, fresh from his double up, will not play. Small blind, big blind, super blind, Lon. More blinds, more action, more action, more fun. Three blinds are better. Folded around to McLaughlin in the big blind. Ace four of diamonds. My off-Broadway musical, There's No Place for the Weak Ace, opens next month in Silver Spring, Maryland. <laughs> and there's a call. It's going to be at the Silver Spring stage. They don't even know it yet. <laughs> they don't even know it yet. I like it. All right, heads up. Aces and ace four suited. Here is the flop. Five, four, four. What a flop for McLaughlin. Well, it looks like there's no place for the weak ace. Might close after opening night. <laughs> I think so. McLaughlin checks his trips. A great looking flop for Lind. I mean, what are the chances McLaughlin has a four? And with aces up, he bets 575. McLaughlin now with the big hammer. Mark Etienne trying to ding. Chris Lynn's stack even more here. Check raise to a million three. And this hand already reminds me of the Morgan Stern Newhouse clash that toppled Anton. And Lind appears to want to step right into it. I think Lind still likes his hand. Well, he does make the call. Yeah, he's hoping that uh, McLaughlin offers at it again on the turn of the river and he can just keep calling him down. Turn card, seven of clubs. McLaughlin still. A big favorite, 98 to 2. Still with chips in hand. And Chris Lynn may be fine with that. 2.1 million. Yeah, but Chris Lynn's now in the tall grass, and he might go from knee deep to neck deep if he carries on. I see no reason why he wouldn't carry on. Well, Mark Etienne will see how committed Lind is right here. There's oh. the call. And the two big stacks at this table have built a pot of almost eight million. Nine of clubs on the river. Third club on a paired board. And Lavender flashing again. 3.1 million from McLaughlin. Yeah, Marshall, 3.1. 3.1 million. Call. Call. Ace four. Ace four is good for 14 million chips. Lachlan takes down a big pot, and Lynn's stack is cut down to size. A small investment from the big blind with a weak ace hits pay dirt. Chris Lynn, the former big stack, going the way of Anton Morgenstern, down to just 23 big blinds. And with that pot, Mark Etienne McLaughlin crosses the 20 million chip barrier. Everything going perfectly for the French Canadian here on day seven. Tonight's bracelet moments are presented by PokerNews.com. $1,500 buy-in no limit hold'em was the most popular type of event this summer as bracelets were handed out at a rapid pace. Among those collecting gold were college football player Jonathan Taylor, Greek pro, Athanasios Polychronopoulos. College professor, Corey Harrison. Canadian student, Jason Duvall. Texas native, Jared Hamby. British veteran, Barney Boatman. And Kansas pro, Brett Schaefer. The players left in the main event, all thinking about $8.3 million at the end, one of the largest first place prizes in World Series history. And to be honest, Lon, if I won the thing, I would invest in municipal bonds before I buy into the main event for the next 835 years. Outer table, Amir Lehovut showing his ace jack, the shove called by the pocket kings of Matt Reed. Lehovut with 10 big blinds left, Reed calling off less than 20% of his stack. Here's the flop. And there's an ace. Lehavut flops a game changer. It's Reed looking for help. Reed feels the sting of that ace. Lehavut feels the rush. The 10 is not a king, Norman, so Reed's still behind. Only a king would bust Amir Lehavut. River card, another 10. A double up for Amir Lehavut, but he can't sit idly by. His chip stack still pretty darn low. Reed finding it difficult to take two steps forward. Lehavut once a junior chess champion. I don't know if you can suck out in chess, Lon. Maybe that's why he transitioned to poker. Want to know more about your favorite players? Head over to ESPN.com slash poker. 
At the feature table, Jay Farber on the button has ace-10 off suit. Argentinian nightclub owner Fabian Ortiz opened the pot for 400,000 with pocket nines. Farber oh. makes the call. See, if there were small blind, big blind, super blind, we might have three more players entering this pot. Small blind, Mark Newhouse, ace-jack, tournament chip leader makes the call. J.C. Tran in the big gets rid of his cards. Three players will see the flop. Ortiz ahead with his pocket nines. The flop tray five deuce of clubs. Newhouse and Farber have wheeled draws. Mark's flush draw is no good. He checks. Ortiz's pocket nines are still best and bet 600,000. Now Farber with monster draws. Yeah, Farber's got the nut flush draw and a straight flush draw. That's a VIP flop for a VIP host. Excellent. Come on. He says all, all in. in for almost 3.7 million. Newhouse folds. Can't blame Jay there. He's under 20 big blinds, and he might win it right here. It's for more than one quarter of Ortiz's remaining stack. He's got pocket nines and a flush draw that's no good. Ortiz oh, postures okay. up and makes the call. Farber, though, the one favored here. Yeah, look at the percentages. Pocket nines under siege. Come on, uh, so many outs. So many outs, he has nines. Club four, ace or 10. Just a club. Just a club, is that asking so much? Farber knows clubs. Another deuce on the turn, keeps Ortiz in the lead and Farber on the hook. Well, and he still has so many outs, 16 of them for Jay, but now just one card to come. One time? There you go. I'll use my one time now. Yeah, might as well. And we're going to use it again. <laughs> the river card. One time! There's the club for Jay Farber. You're, you're a brave man for waiting until the turn to use it. Yeah, I know. I want to use it. <laughs> I got so many. I got so many outs on, I, on the flop. I can't use yeah, it on the. You're right, you're right, you're I right, got right, one right. card. I don't think I would use it on the flop. I'd wait. I think waiting is the right. I play. think waiting is the right play. Yeah. I think waiting is the right. Play. I'm chicken. <laughs> I use it right away. <laughs> so many outs on the flop. I got two cards. Yeah, they hit like right? 17 outs. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, with my ace queen, or, or which one was it? Ortiz drops to 10th place. A third of his chips will go clubbing with Jay Farber. I'm out of one times. Yep. We're both out of two, one times. Two people, <laughs> at, this table two people at this table have used their one time. The yeah. one time work, Jay Farber's River Luck keeps the main event field at 21. At the feature table, a flop of 688 gave Mark Newhouse a gut shot and Jay Farber an open ender. Action on Newhouse. He checks to the pre flop razor. I used to have arms like that. A, a freak injury brought me to my current physical state. <laughs> Farber, with his draw, bets 375. And now Newhouse. And that's a check raise from the big stack to 875. And this is a situation where Newhouse not necessarily needing to hit his gut shot. He's playing against a tightish player who just won a big pot. Newhouse could be looking to win this pot down the road. There's a call for 500,000. And Farber will take the best hand to the turn. But look at the cards they started with. Queen of Hearts. As far as these hands are concerned, that's just a waste of felt space. You know, Newhouse is out of position line, but I think he should barrel on here. Bet might take it down. Well, no bet from Newhouse. Farber with just $2,000 in live poker earnings checks himself. Nine of spades. Farber rivers the straight to seal the deal. Newhouse is the one reaching for chips, though. That's and that's a million five with three spades out there on the paired board. He's bluffing, Lon. He's bluffing. <laughs> I can see his cards. He's pretending like he's got a flush. He can't beat the board. Call him, Jay. A straight beat, Squad Douche. Oh. Board. When I play at Showdown, my opponent never says board. <laughs> but your readers do. Jay Farber will take that six million chip pot from one of the big stacks in the room. And Jay's Las Vegas Loyals are in party mode. Newhouse's loss is Jay's gain up to fifth place now. VIP host slash poker player. What is the world coming to?
All right, let's go from the feature table to our one and only outer table. Short stack. Max Coleman shoved with pocket eights pre-flop. James Alexander greeted that with a call, holding jack nine. I thought you were just dead. <laughs> I like play that base clean race <laughs> Alexander showing a little impatience here. I know it's for less than 10% of his stack, but really jack nine? Coleman at risk, but has the pocket pair. Here's the flop. Five, seven, four. Pocket pair still good for Coleman. Plus, he added a gut shot. Alexander still with six outs to end Max Turn Coleman's card. day. Turn card. Another seven. I'm going to have to spike one. Coleman needs to dodge a jack or a nine to double up. River cards a six. Coleman didn't need it, but the straight will bring him the double up. Coleman goes from eight big blinds to 18 big blinds. Alexander doesn't seem to mind it. He still has the fourth best chip count. You were bet you were destined to win this. Look how you. Yeah, they just would have won. Yeah. You were destined to win it. Coleman keeps his seat, but it's still a hot seat. He is 20th out of 21 remaining players. And despite doubling up Coleman, Alexander is still very healthy with his chip stack. By virtue of some timely flops and one really good call, Mark Etienne McLaughlin is the man to beat with 21 remaining. Carlos Mortensen sitting in 10th place with a slightly below average stack. Nothing about Carlos Mortensen is slightly below average, Lon. You disgust me. David Benefield with the shortest stack, but uh, he's been there before. Well, maybe he can ride the short stack all the way to the main event title, but frankly, I like Canadian Mark Etienne McLaughlin's chances better with the big stack. As day seven of the World Series of Poker main event hits the backstretch, former shoe-ins for the final table have faded dramatically. As chip leaders fall, new ones emerge, including the current top stack tattoo artist Mark Etienne McLaughlin. I don't even realize what I'm in, and I think it's why I'm successful. For me, it's just uh, one poker tournament, and maybe after I'm going to realize what it's really mean. With the ink about to dry on day seven, can Mark Etienne hang on to his lead, or will he suffer the same fate as chip leaders that came before him? Main event, day seven. Back in Las Vegas, the 2013 World Series of Poker main event has just 21 players remaining. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. We head over to the only outer table, two Texans locking horns. Bar owner James Alexander with Ace Deuce suited, open raise for 425. It may cost him more because David Benefield has pocket aces and a short stack and is all in. Alexander's got 15 million chips, so he can afford this if he's in the mood. I may gamble here too. Sounds like he's in the mood. Yeah, sure. I call. A call, and Benefield loves to hear that. I can still hit a flush if diamonds come. Or a three, four, five. Yeah, I can still be a rocket if I grow a new pair of legs. <laughs> Alexander had told Benefield he was the one guy he didn't want to knock out. Poker pros Brian Hastings and Jason Kuhn on David's rail. Alexander trying to knock out Benefield by coming from way behind. Here's the flop. Trace seven, king two, diamonds. A flush draw for Alexander. It's never easy, Lon. This country wasn't built on easy flops. <laughs> Alexander trying to ride his momentum. Turn card now is a two, giving Alexander two more outs. Don't let it be this way. It usually is, brother. The river card, another seven secures Benefield's win, bringing him 6.2 million chips. David Benefield keeps his seat. Not a huge hit to Alexander, but not a good time to be trending downward. Well, I was hoping to speed up the tournament, boys. Two people got lucky. I mean, they had the best hands. His bar is the flying walrus at the moment. He's more like a sad seal. I have a feeling I'm going to win the next one. Around the room, some other big stacks. VIP host Jay Farber nearing 13 million. Cash game pro Mark Newhouse over 17 million. Sylvain Lusli representing France well. But it's a French-Canadian in the chip lead, Mark Etienne McLaughlin. 21 players right now remaining at this 2013 main event. Eight players above the average stack of nine million. Three of the top five, McLaughlin, Farber, and Alexander. Poker not their primary business, but they're acting like it is. 
Yeah. Why do I? I have all the. I have all the lucky sweats, crazy. This is a one-day tournament. I have all the lucky sweats and my good luck charm. I can't lose. Jay Farber moving his stack in the right direction at this feature table. 22-year-old German Anton Morgenstern doing the exact opposite. Once on a meteoric rise, now a falling star. I'll save the Berlin Wall comparison since Anton wasn't born when it came down, but this collapse has been hard to watch from nearly 30 million to six. Mark Newhouse, one of the primary beneficiaries of Anton's fall. Newhouse flopped the full house and got the maximum. Now he can play in position against some shorter stacks. Morgenstern under the gun at this feature table folds. Farber. Looks down to Jack Five, gives it up, as does Newhouse on J.C. Tran. The California pro and two-time bracelet winner with ace tray of spades raises to 425. Folded to the small blind, Fabian Ortiz with jacks. Fun fact for you, everyone knows Wild Bill Hickok was holding aces and eights when he was shot to death, but he was playing pocket jacks five months earlier when he decided to get married. <laughs> Ortiz calls with the jacks. In the big blind, Sylvain Luzli with queen jack. Frankly, I always thought Wild Bill and Calamity Jane would have made a nice couple. Absolutely. Loosely calls. So three players will see the flop. All right now, Ortiz's Jack's in the lead. 5-10 queen. Jack's take a nosedive for Ortiz because Loosely hits top pair. Check, check to Tran. People who go to work every day find a way to smile now and then. How come poker players take themselves so seriously? Lighten up. Jeez, you're playing poker. 8.3 million for first. You know, it's not all happy times. Ace high and ever hopeful. JC bets 640. Ortiz with the jacks. Why do you always defend the other people? <laughs> Wants to come along. Loosely now. With the biggest stack at this table, he and Newhouse beginning the hand with 17 million. Loosely with top pair. And this French pro just with a call. Lots of mistakes made already in this hand, Lon, and I'm not even in it. <laughs> the turn card. Now three players still in it. Ace of hearts, and the turn smiles on J.C. Tran. Ortiz checks his jacks again. Loosely checks his queens. Boy, Tran running luckier here than the Sacramento Kings did in game six of the 2002 NBA playoffs against the L.A. Lakers. <laughs> You remember that far back? The Kings have never forgotten that game. <laughs> Tran with a bet of a million, 255,000. Ortiz with a clinic on how not to play pocket jacks. Didn't raise pre-flop, called on the flop when he was second best, and now he is third best. And JC betting from a position of power. A fold from Ortiz. Loosely can be quite sticky. <clears throat> Sylvan wondering why JC is betting on the turn, and he does fold, and rightly so. Good fold. JC will take that pot, but both Ortiz and Loosely had opportunities to end that hand early. JC Tran over 14 million. And JC Tran with a clinic on how to play the weak ace. Spike an ace on the turn. We've seen some serious ups and downs here on day seven of this main event, but one consistent force has been J.C. Tran. Hard to imagine Tran collapsing the way Anton Morgenstern has. Norman, what separates Tran from other pros? It seems like he's immune to major swings. Fellows like J.C. and myself have perspective. We're both in our 30s, well, he's in his 30s, and we've both seen a lot of poker ups and downs. His family life, wife, son, and daughter on the way keeps J.C. focused, and he fully realizes what a rare opportunity this is. Anton Morgenstern's a good kid, but he might think making the final three tables of the main event is standard fare. J.C. Tran knows it isn't. Being at the final three tables guarantees you 285 grand. Being in the final three worth at least 3.7 million. Making wise choices under pressure is critical. And James Alexander facing another all-in with a deuce. Rep Porter shoved with nines. I just wish I had won one of those before. Please don't tell me Alexander is actually thinking of calling here. Alexander becoming an ace deuce savant. Capable of anything, right? I call. Okay, then. Oh, wow. I have an ace. I hope I hit an ace. He needed four million to call Porter down. I just have ace deuce again. I just need an ace. Just one. 
Could have been King Queen, King Jack. Just give me an ace. I, anybody fold an ace? I don't think anybody did, right? Brett Porter at risk. Alexander in harm's way again. <laughs> Time for a brother on brother pep talk. Porter, the two time bracelet winner, got his chips in good. After you win this, quit raising the mic because that's all they're waiting on. This is tournament strategy when the points get so deep, they're just going to re raise every time. And hope you feel right. No, I, I, I almost said, but it would have been the same thing. Yeah, that's your only choice. All right, here's right the now. flop. Porter at risk. They're trying to do to you. And ace, ace for James. It's about but, time I win a race. Well, this yeah. wasn't Stop a race. Sure. Porter right. grasping for hope. You Stop gambling with them? No, quit re raising pre flop. No, quit being these little raises pre flop. They're just trying to steal you. That's a million dead every time. Only a nine million saves million. rep. They get away with it three times. They've doubled their stack. The river card is a nine. Yeah. Porter spikes the two yes. outer to survive. Yes. Let's go, baby. Wow. Let's go. Yes. 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 Alexander was due to lose a race. That's one sad brother and a sadder brother. Team Alexander takes the hit. Like warm up exercise level, oh, yeah, yeah. not quite peak exercise level. Rip Porter over nine million. I can't win it. I can't win one of these coin flips. And you gotta win them to win the tournament. It's quite a nine. That was a huge nine. That that's a tournament changer. That's ten million there. That should have been here. He just might be following in Morgenstern's footsteps. Capable of anything, right? I call. I have an ace. I hope I hit an ace. Ace. It's about but time I win a race. Oh, no! yes! 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 Let's go, baby! That was a huge nine. That, that's a tournament changer. That's 10 million there that should have been here. Alexander has the math right. A massive river nine changes the fate for now of James Alexander and Rep Porter. Back at the feature table, Mark Newhouse sits with the biggest stack. Morgan Stern, the smallest. Newhouse, whose nickname is Newhizzle, says he doesn't like pro sports. Probably saved him a lot of money in his circle of friends. A race of 400000 with Jack 8. J.C. Tran, Queen Jack of Diamonds, does like pro sports and the Sacramento Kings. Touche. <laughs> Tran makes the call to Sylvan Loosely now with two red sevens. Luce Lee says he was feeling the pressure and didn't sleep well before day six, but then after he got lucky, hitting a runner-runner straight for most of his chips against Daynard Pettit's pocket aces, he felt like day seven is a free roll. And that's a call from Luce Lee with the sevens. Morgan Stern with King Queen in the big blind. 200,000 more makes four players. We'll see the flop. Attention, Anton Morgan Stern is in a pot. All chips in his stack need to be on high alert. Nine, nine, deuce, two diamonds. Pocket sevens keep their lead for Luce Lee. He checks. Morgan Stern checked. Newhouse likewise. I don't think J.C. Tran's going to check. This is J.C. Tran's moment. No, he checks as well. Thanks, J.C. With the flush draw. Turn card seven of clubs. Loosely turns a full boat to slam the door on the other three. He checks again. Morgan Stern also. Newhouse checks. I don't think J.C. Tran's going to. Oh, why bother? <laughs> Here we go. Free river card. Ten of spades. Loose Lee's opponents were already drawing dead, but that ten gave Newhouse a jack high straight. Yeah, Loose Lee's check on the turn will pay dividends on the river. How much value can he get? He bets 750000 less than half the pot. Morgan Stern's gone. If I'm Mark Newhouse, I'd be dead certain here. I've got the best hand with the nut straight. And Newhouse appears to be thinking as you do, and that's dangerous. Good for you. A raise to two million from Newhouse. Tran folds. Now back to Luz Lee. And here's another man who's dead certain. He has the best hand, and he does. Sylvan Luz Lee with the full house. Newhouse with the straight. Please. 4.8. There you go. Announcing his strength. 4.8 million. Newhouse does not like the sound of that. And that ray sounded even more daunting with a French accent, I believe. Boy, Newhouse in a quandary. He and Loosely with pretty even stacks. Newhouse starting with 17 million. Loosely with 16 million. And Newhouse gives it up. One solid fold. And he didn't even wait for Loosely to complete his bet. Still putting chips in the pot. 
Mark Newhouse with a very strong fold, saved himself a lot of chips, while Sylvan Luce Lee now is knocking on the door of 20 million. Well, we thought Newhouse's fold was a good one. Here's what Antonio Esfandiari and Phil Locke thought about that. Well, this is textbook poker, boys and girls. Really, everything's in line with solid winning poker. New Hizzle, chip leader, jack eight of clubs, real hand, raises, things happen, we get to the river, and... Tell us how you really feel. On the river, he makes a great fold. I mean, he, he raises for value, and then he folds correctly. It's Whenever you're done. I was done. I get passed off. You a have to ago. give Mark credit for folding. Uh, he made a value raise and realized his hand was no good. A lot of players would make a frustration tilt call right there, but he just realized that his opponent would never raise without a boat, and so just folded the straight. So fantastic laydown. Yep. Here's my analysis. Usually Antonio does the heavy lifting, and Phil then agrees with him. This time it was the other way around. <laughs> All right, let's check in on that active outer table. David Benefield opened shoved from the small blind with ace tray off. He has big blind Max Coleman covered. Coleman pondering queen jack of hearts. Max oh, Coleman nice. squirming in his seat. Oh, no, no, call. Coleman makes the call to put himself oh, at wow. risk. Boy, I don't know about that call. 20 big blinds left for Coleman calling with queen jack suited. It's probably the right tournament decision. I couldn't do it. Benefield ahead pre-flop. I think you're going to win this. And if I don't catch your hand right, you're going to be the last guy from Texas standing. This is one odd Texas connection. I can't imagine Benefield walking into Alexander's bar and say, talking to Brother Dwayne. What Dwayne's. is going on? This is the main event. People are coming up with Queen Jack. I thought I was just dead. Man. I was like, so I said, like at seven or something. Max Coleman at risk. All right, here's the flop. A deuce 10 4. Coleman, the Wichita native, not happy. Benefield's ace no, high with a wheel draw, a 3 to 1 favorite. Benefield getting some counseling from Jason Kuhn. To lock it up on the Not turn. Nine or a, king. a five would indeed end the hand right now in Benefield's favor. And the turn card does just that. You locked it up, brother. You won. Come on, forward. Benefield turns the straight and knocks out Max Coleman. David Benefield started day seven, 27th in chips out of 27 left. He is now seventh in chips with 20 left. That's as good. I shot 20 yes. For double X, Max Coleman, 21st place and his first ever live six figure score. See, at least my chips went to the right place against him. I double him up, give it to you. You're good. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. I think once you get this far, yeah, the money's nice, but the bracelet's there, the title's there, and everybody wants to be world champion. Really, this being the World Series of Poker experience, didn't really hit me until probably late last night. It has been a roller coaster ride. Uh, I've been through all of all emotion. I've been chip leader. I've been short stack. You know, once you see the end in sight, you just want to get the prize. The prize is $8.3 million in the bracelet. Jay Farber and 19 others left trying to claim it. And for some reason, Chris Linsrail has adopted a coyote howl as their signature sound. Lind with ace five of hearts at the secondary table. Lind, native of Goshen, New York, which has the oldest active harness racing track in the U.S. A raise to 500,000. Ryan Reese on the button. And jokingly, Lind said in a questionnaire that Reese was his favorite poker player. Since then, they've become friends and are enjoying sharing this main event experience. Ace queen for Reese. Reese, native of East Lansing, Michigan, which is just east of Lansing, the state capital lot. There's also Lake Lansing, which is a lake just outside of East Lansing. And Reese makes the call. There's also the East Lansing Film Festival and East Lansing Art Festival. That's a, a film festival and an art festival, both held in East Lansing. <laughs> and the blinds both fold. It's up. You have me barely covered. Maybe, I don't know. I saw the with five. The flop. Queen, king, king. King's up for Reese. He doesn't know it, but he's darn near bulletproof. Lind in big trouble, you see, by the less than mark next to his name. 
But Lynn reaching for chips, bets 580,000. And at less than 1% symbol next to his name, also the chance Chris Lynn ever will work in the banking business again. <laughs> and now Ryan Reese, a math whiz in high school in East Lansing. Now trying to solve this Chris Lynn problem. And Ryan says one step, I guess, is just a call here. Almost 2.7 million chips in the middle. Turn card, another queen. Reese with a full boat. Lynn now drawing dead to a win, but they can still chop it. Yeah, he could spike a river king to make kings full on the board and get half of that pot. Lynn once again happy to lead out. 950,000. East Lansing also home to Interstate 69, which runs from Indianapolis and connects to Canada. Maybe my favorite interstate in the Midwest. Ryan Reese with the full house, but it's not the nuts. So maybe a little pause for concern here. I think there's a main street in Goshen, and I'm pretty sure they have traffic lights. <laughs> but nothing like East Lansing. A call for 950,000. The pot grows even bigger. River cart, seven of spades. Remember that zero next to Lynn's name means he has a losing hand, but it doesn't mean he won't bet again. Nope, just a check now. Ryan Reese. Come on. And he says all in for over three million, and Lynn wastes no time in mucking his hand. And now it's Ryan Reese with the bigger stack as he passes Chris Lynn. There, Reese the beast. With a chip feast, Lent Sanity has leakage. Indeed, and that does benefit Ryan Reese, who has been hanging around the bottom of the chip count for quite a while now. But that boost to his stack will give him plenty of confidence. You take a look at the top three stacks in the room. One of the former top three stacks, that guy, Texan James Alexander. He's one of the most talkative players left in the field, so we mic'd him up again. Here we are again. Rather be lucky than good sometimes. <laughs> there are no bad players at this stage of the tournament, just different styles. Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> I will, right after I take that stack, brother. These guys are animals. Are you a mouse, a lion, or the eagle? I'm the jackal. Sometimes I look like a superstar, and the other times I look like a donk. Here, I'll help you out. I'll help you out here. Good job. Oh, get in there. About him, if he's cute, Aunt Tina hooked me up. And we can have some fun here. I actually give a pretty damn good yeah, one. So I actually take some pride in my ability to do that. You were great. To do it with both hands. Yeah, I go out of this tournament. Somebody had to do something freaking sick. I'm not going to get outplayed. Oh, look at this. Oh. Jealous? 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 We're simple down in Texas. Catch you on the flip side. James with jack eight of clubs is facing a raise from Amir Lehovut holding pocket fives right now at that outer table. I don't think Alexander knows Lehovut also went to school in Austin. They're both UT grads, so he has another unlikely Texas connection here. Alexander calls from the small blind. Nakalato folds his big blind, so heads up now. Five jack nine. Top pair and a flush draw for Alexander, but Lehovut flops a set. That is a Texas-sized flop line. Alexander checked. Lehovut, Texas Junior Chess Champion. Alexander, Texas Junior Sling the Bull Champion. <laughs> That's a half million. I'm all in. All in. All in a call. Sure, and please. bang, bang, just like that. Lehovut at risk, but way ahead, a two to one favorite. Lehovut's main event on the line. Alexander in for most of his chips. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> I didn't flop a flush. No, don't worry, baby. Don't worry. Don't worry. Honey, don't worry. Don't you worry. As you mentioned, the bar owner, a two-to-one dog here, or as he would call it, a race. <laughs> Turn card. Five of spades. Case closed. Quad fives brings the double up to Amir Lehavut. Lehavut keeps getting short and surviving. And that nearly crushes the tournament life out of James Alexander. Alexander reminds me of the lottery winner who goes broke in the next year. It's tough to watch, but you just hope he had fun in the process. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I can't see. How quickly a tournament does thou turn? 
Eight big blinds left for James. When you have no chips is when it's over. That's true. Not till then. Gotcha, gotcha, Mom. The Walrus is flying very low right now with the shortest stack in the room. Oh, golly. Back inside the Amazon room at the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. And back at the featured table with 20 players remaining. Anton Morgenstern with Ace King just saw Fabian Ortiz try to limp in and see a flop. We've all got dreams. <laughs> so action on Morgenstern. One time dominating chip leader, no longer. There is the race to 575. Morgan Stern and Alexander seem to be racing each other towards bankruptcy. Well, here will be the man who loves disco music versus the man who loves electronic music. And when you're running bad like Anton, people like to play pots against you. You're more likely to keep running bad or make bad decisions. Ortiz makes a call for 375 more. So heads up with the two short stacks at this table. Boy, it's amazing to say that. All right, here's the flop. Jack Queen four, Ortiz scores top pair. Morgan Stern, a Broadway draw. Ortiz has the action, he checks. At this point of the main event line, if I were Anton, I'd leave the Amazon room, walk up and down the strip five times, then come back in here later tonight. Whatever chips are blinded off while he's gone can't possibly equal whatever chips he's gonna lose playing pots right now. All in. Cool. Morgan Stern put Ortiz all in, and Fabian makes the call. It's easy to think a guy in a vest never has anything, but in this case, you'd be mistaken. Ortiz calls for his last eight big blinds. It is Ortiz at risk, but he's the one who flopped top pair. Morgan Stern looking to try to take out a shorter stack, and there's not many of them in the room. King of Hearts pairs both, does not change Anton's outs. Morgan Stern needs an ace or a 10 to knock out Fabian Ortiz. The river card, the four of clubs. Ortiz tries playing for the minimum and ends up getting paid the maximum. And Lon, I've got to hand it to the 22-year-old Morgan Stern. He does not change countenance even as his whole main event collapses in front of him. And Norman, it's official. Morgan Stern and James Alexander, the two short stacks in the main event right now. Fabian Ortiz knocking on five million chips, 24 big blinds for the Argentinian. Back to respectability, though plenty of work to do for Ortiz. He's a nightclub owner who loves disco music. That sounds great, but Phil Helmuth is his favorite player. Phil is big in Argentina. This is not good. The <laughs> poker brat with South American reach. Next thing we'll hear is that he's become friends with Lionel Messi. The interesting thing is that Phil Helmuth's favorite player is Phil Helmuth. <laughs> Ortiz right. now wakes up with pocket Ace. aces right after his double up, and he's going to raise it up to 400,000. Ortiz finished 298th in the 09 main event. Loosely folds to Morgan Colin. Stern, Ace Jack, and yeah, that's all in for almost two and a half million from Morgan Stern. 12 big blinds and awful timing for Anton's Ace Jack. Cue the swan song. And a quick call from Ortiz. And he's about to take the rest of Morgan Stern's chips. Well, Newhouse took the big chunk from him a while back. Ortiz trying to take the rest of Morgan Stern's chips in two straight hands. It's like overwhelming and chip leader. After the first break, he is a huge chip leader. He, he, he's like, basically, if he didn't play. You know how our first level went? That's how this guy's second in the first level. <laughs> You can't believe it. I can't believe it. None of the other players can believe what they're he seeing. He would have made the final table and probably, like, oh, yeah. I mean, he would have. Oh, wow. And well, at least moved up yeah, Morgan times. Stern at risk. The flop for Trey Deuce brings a chop into play. Anton's run into some big hands, but he also hasn't played well. He had almost 30 million chips. If you go to the final table with almost 30 million, you're probably a top three stack. Turn card six of spades. Now Morgan Stern can only hope for a chop. Yeah, Morgan Stern can only stay alive with a River 5 to game, chop game, the pot. Game, game. The River card is a 9. Good game, guys. Good game. Ortiz wins the pot, completes the remarkable main event arc that saw Anton Morgan Stern go from final table lock to main event footnote. And how about Ortiz? Back-to-back -back hands from all in with eight big blinds left to almost eight million chips. So sick. Fabian Ortiz closes the book on the German hard luck story. Morgenstern, stoic at the table, 
And there you witness a shred of the pain the 22-year-old is racked with right now. Yeah, he's crestfallen, and you got to be heartbroken for him. So one former Top Gun is out, and now another former Hefty Stack is at risk. James Alexander called all-in with Ace-9 after fellow Texan David Benefield forced the issue with King Queen off. So Alexander trying to save his day seven as his family looks on. Here's the flop. 10-6-9, Alexander pairs yeah, he's up. He's still very much alive. No paint. All little, all little. A gut shot for no. Benefield. Simmer down now. Simmer down. Alexander talked about not wanting to bust Benefield. Benefield <laughs> might bust him now. Yeah, maintain it. Turn card. Another 10. Maintain Alexander it. still Keep in line low. for the Anything double up. Low. Big card. Most of the cards left in the deck are low. Let's, <laughs> let's do it. I let you buy back out for 700000 right now. You take seven dealer. <laughs> King, Queen, or Jack ends James Alexander's main event. The river card is a seven, yeah. and that will keep James Alexander in the game. This card is a beautiful thing. Benefield will pay off the small end and still be left with 42 big blinds. Alexander gets to keep his chair. I've got sunshine. Because <laughs> it, it's cold outside. Flying wall, we're still flying low, but still flying. Oh, it'll warm up, I hope. Benefield takes the hit, but left with eight and a half million. I will survive as long as I know how to run. James, I think, has been hanging around the I jukebox at the flying wall was a little too much. Calling. A call. A call. What a rough ride it was for Anton Morgenstern. Consoled by his friends after his knockout. For James Alexander, a day seven ride with similar turbulence. Yeah, you're still very much alive. No paint. <laughs> but just before the break, a key double up to David Benefield. New leaders have taken the places of Morgan Stern and Alexander. Sylvain Lee now at the top with Mark Etienne McLaughlin close behind. To McLaughlin's table, Ryan Reese has the action under the gun. He folds seven tray. Action now on Carlos Mortensen. But Carlos won the main event in 2001. Dewey Topko finished second, Phil Helmuth fifth, and Mike Mattiso sixth. Carlos with pocket kings. Carlos's wife, Pastora on the left, sitting with Erica Lindgren, formerly Erica Schoenberg. Carlos with a raise to 400,000. 613 entrants at the main event in 2001. 6,000 plus this year. Folded to the button, Mark Etienne McLaughlin, jack five of diamonds. Well, every time someone gets a big stack of late lawn, they fall prey to Mr. Fancy Pants, Fancy Play Syndrome. Jack five of diamonds wants to re-raise to 975. Yeah, come on. I mean, you give me a big stack, Lon. I'm going to the gift shop and getting some Skittles. <laughs> In the small blind. Kawa Uch. Card dead. Chris Lynn folds back to Mortensen with the big pocket pair. There's the matador. And there's the bully. And there is the four bet. 2,100,000 from Mortensen with the Kings. The Matador treating the bully like a bull. Carlos looks cool and collected. His supporters not so much. McLaughlin does release, and that has Carlos Mortensen's cheering section very happy. Well, to his credit, McLaughlin comes to his senses before any more damage. Now Carlos up near 9 million. McLaughlin slips to third for the moment. Mortensen, one of four players left who call Las Vegas home full time, along with Jay Farber, Chris Lind, and Ryan Reese. We'll keep it here at the secondary table. I am never not amused by a Carlos Mortensen chip castle. Could be straight, flared, checked, or solid. I'm a fan. <laughs> we would pay money to see it, wouldn't we? Absolutely. Mortensen likely will sit this one out. Yes, he does fold. Fold it to McLaughlin. Jack five didn't work, so he's going to upgrade to Jack six. 400,000 is the raise. So I guess if Jack seven's his next hand, he might shove. <laughs> Maybe so. Hold it to Chris Lynn, who gets out of the way. Ryan Reese in the big blind. A jack and a king. 
Reese, an honor student at Our Lady of the Lakes High School in Waterford, Michigan. Waterford, less than an hour from Canada, so he and Mark Etienne are practically countrymen. That's true. Reese wants to play a pot with one of the big stacks. He calls for 200,000, so heads up. The flop, eight Trey King. Reese flops top pair. And he checks to the razor. McLaughlin considers poker a hobby. And you know, every couple of years makes a real deep run in the main event. <laughs> what a life. McLaughlin does continue. 600,000. Continuation hooey from McLaughlin. He's got nothing. That's what Ryan is thinking. Ryan making sure he has something that connects with the board. Mark Etienne doesn't have that requirement. You should give him one of those little sketchy notepads to write his cards down. He's always looking back. He just calls. Turn card now. Deuce of spades brings a flush draw to McLaughlin's ledger. Reese with another check. These two have played some interesting hands with each other. Reminds me of my Yahtzee battles with Vic Lippman in the late 60s. <laughs> a check back from McLaughlin. River card is a queen and another spade torpedoes Reese's top pair. My goodness. Reese checks again. Well, remember how Reese had pocket jacks against McLaughlin 7-3 suited and Mark Etienne made a spade flush? Here, a pair of kings on the flop versus McLaughlin squad douche and Mark Etienne again makes a spade flush. And Mark Etienne. Try to get some value. Smallish bet, 775. Indeed, inviting a call at that bet. Reese would be getting almost four to one on his money to see it. That hand kept slipping further and further away from Ryan Reese. This is a hard bet to ignore, as you mentioned. Especially when you have top pair. But four spades out there. And Reese throws in calling chips. McLaughlin reveals the winning rivered flush, but Ryan Reese just couldn't resist that value bet. But he seemed to know it. Not a very confident call. Reese is wavering again. McLaughlin is building. Reese down to 24 big blinds. McLaughlin once again climbing up the upper part of the leaderboard as the ebb and flow of the 2013 main event keeps everyone here on Pins and Needles. Tonight's Bracelet Moments are presented by PokerNews.com. Six-handed No Limit Hold'em is popular both online and at the World Series of Poker. Online poker coach and author John Beaupre won the $1,500 event. 22-year-old Levi Berger took down the $2,500 event for nearly half a million bucks. Martin Finger calls Vienna Austria home, and thanks to his victory in the 3K tournament, has an extra $506,000 to his name. And in the major 25K event, Steve Sung won over $1.2 million and his second bracelet. With 19 players left in the main event, two of the remaining three tables are playing six-handed. So what changes six-handed, Norman, compared to the regular nine-handed action we're accustomed to? Well, of course, hand values go way up, but for me, the most important difference is you have more room at the table. <laughs> to the feature table, Jay Farber raised with ace-king. Mark Newhouse then re-raised with ace-queen. So it's back to Farber now with the bigger of these two stacks. Farber and Newhouse were told by a mutual friend earlier on day seven to play nice with each other. Well, they're certainly playing a lot with each other. Not nice here. A four bet from Farber with Ace King to a million seven hundred twenty thousand. And now Newhouse considering his next move. How would he play these cards under the influence of white magic? Mark, Ace Queen, I hate Ace Queen. Now think about this, you three bet him, he four bet you. This is a guy that did not three bet it with two nines. This is a guy that has your hand beat 100%. You cannot call, best case scenario, hoping for jacks. But whenever we start getting into four betting and five betting, ace queen is dominated, crushed. You don't need white magic to understand this. Unless for some reason you saw something where he was super weak, it's an easy fold. I'm with the poker brat from here to Argentina. You've got to know to fold to a Farber four bet with ace queen. But under the bright lights on day seven, it's not an easy anything, but there is the call from Newhouse. I hate that call, even six handed, even getting four to one and in position. 
So Farber with the best of it going to the flop with his ace-king against Newhouse's ace-queen. And ace for both. Is that what Mark wanted to flop? Now, I don't even like ace-queen heads up, Lon. I might even muck it in blackjack. So Farber still with the best of it with the king kicker, of course. And the VIP host is not going to be very hospitable here. A bet of 2350000 and there's no way he's getting away from it now. Newhouse has top pair, big kicker. But I've said it a thousand times, ace-queen somehow finds a thousand ways to lose. Yep. Mark Newhouse will commit the calling chips. More than eight and a half million in the pot now. Turn card. Tray of spades. And no reason for ace-king to slow down here with that Terminally useless tray on the turn. Come on. Full speed ahead. Farber puts Newhouse all in. Well, we'll see if Mark thinks better with his sunglasses off. If he folds here, he's still in decent shape with more than 40 big blinds. Newhouse does fold, and even without the call, Farber's the new chip leader. Well, folding was the first good thing Newhouse did in that hand, and it likely saves his main event. Farber over 20 million. Newhouse raises and then folds away. Almost a third of his stack, dropping him to 10th while shooting Jay Farber to the top of the charts. And with his style, you get the feeling he might hang on to that spot for a while. Inside the Amazon room, Las Vegas VIP host Jay Farber, the new toast of the town. He'll fold his suited connectors. Mark Newhouse needs makeup chips after making Farber the chip leader with Jack 10, a raise to 425. Tran with pocket fives. And he'll make the call. I am renewing my call for Norman Chad. Hold him, Lon. Two card flop, then a turn, a peekaboo, and a river. Get on board, <laughs> folks. Folded to the big blind, Sylvain Luzli with lots and lots and lots of chips, and eight, seven off, and a call. Three players, Newhouse favored with the Jack-10 right now. Here is the flop. Jack-10-5, Newhouse with top two. A gut shot for Loosley, a set of fives for Tran. A check from Loosley. Newhouse bets 475 with a nice hand, but it's Tran with a big one. And remember, comedian Don McHenry's foolproof theory of poker, a 10 always helps somebody. Here it helped and hurt Mark Newhouse. Just a call with the set from Tran. Loosely folds his draw. So heads up. About 10 million. About. The two Commerce Casino buddies head to head. Turn card, ace of diamonds. Tran still best. Check. Newhouse checks. Newhouse and Tran have played a lot of 200, 400, 300, 600 limit hold'em at the Commerce in LA. Rep Porter, still in this main event, also plays with them a good deal. JC Tran trying to earn some chips with a set of fives. Bets 925,000. Tough spot for Newhouse. Flops top two, and now Tran is betting on the turn, and that ace is one of the worst looking cards in the deck for Mark. Well, we've seen Newhouse get away from some big hands. It looks like he'll commit the chips here to see a river card. Yeah, I'm a little surprised he called there. He knows JC well. He's got to figure he's probably beat here. River card tray of diamonds puts a third diamond on the board. Check. Check to Tran. JC with the best hand, a stack of lavender. That's two million. Oh, he should have gone broke. And a fold and a show from Newhouse. Wow. Tran shows. We could have got it in on the flop. Oh, I bet he folded. I, I know. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. We could have got it in on the flop. I had a set of fives. <laughs> that's pretty sick. Newhouse yeah, what I was He's gone there if they get it all in yeah. on the flop. That's not the, that's not the flop that I want to. Back now to James Alexander. He's all in with ace seven, waiting on Amir Lehavut with ace ten. Don't have King James. He's deciding whether or not he wants to be the one that doubles me up, or whether or not it's just time to gamble and get me out of here. Amir can afford it, and given Alexander's play and style, this should be an automatic call. 
One of the two is going to happen, though, if he calls. Amir with 14 million chips. Oh, I'll take a walk. You can fold. That might convince Amir to call. I call. call. Good luck, sir. What do you have? There it is. You have me crushed. I, I have to spike a seven. I have ace seven. Alexander committed way too many chips on day seven with weak aces. And now he's going to need a little walrus luck, assuming walruses are lucky. <laughs> I need a seven. James Alexander dominated. I mean, it's, it's out there. It's in the deck. He's right. Somewhere. There are three sevens left among the 48 other cards in the deck. <laughs> I need a seven. Here's the flop. Amir pairs his 10. That's pretty much all she wrote. As it comes queen jack. Turn card now, nine of clubs. Alexander drawing That's dead. Lehavet wins the pot to send James Alexander off into a very subdued sunset. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Amir Lehavet over 17 million now. Alexander played his way out of the main event, but his bar is going to be in a party mode for a long time. What a wild and wonderful run for James Alexander. So with his exit, we're down to 18 players. They're going to redraw for new seating at just two tables. Sylvan Luzli has the lead back, and as we saw on so many occasions, the chip lead in 2013 is tenuous at best. So many of these players, Benefield, Ortiz, Porter, Newhouse, Reese, have survived short stacks to hang on. Meanwhile, James Alexander played it like the old Wow Wow West. Yeah, it's typical. He really just started to play like a like an online sit and go. I mean, people just open and shoving, open and shoving. And when four people open and shove into you for three million and two point five, and they just do it over and over again, and you can't knock out one of them, it's bound to happen. You know? I, I never looked at the money. I never looked at any of that. I wasn't trying to hit a bubble or anything. I was trying to win this thing. The main event is about realizing dreams. Wow. But along the way, dreams can be dashed. Anton Morgenstern oh. and James Alexander had designs on million dollar paydays, but erratic play led to their eliminations. That's 10 million there that should have been here. Good game, guys. The math of the main event is very simple now. Nine will play in November at the final table. 18 players are left, and all want to win just as badly. Of course I want to win this, and I know that is going to bring me some more fame. But you know, the 8.3 million, I can take that. It's surreal. Um, it's tough to put words on it. Uh, right now it's just chips. I want to get more chips. I'm only focusing on that. For me, money is more important than recognition. It's unbelievable what you go through in a tournament. The wait is over. Tonight, we will have a November 9. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Main event, day seven. If you believe the World Series of Poker is a marathon tonight, most definitely is the sprint to the final table. Hi, everyone. Lon McCarran with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. Rails are growing by the minute. Current chip leader, 26-year-old Frenchman Sylvain Luzli. As they say in France, spring in Paris is nice, but chips in Vegas are nicer. Yeah, Luzli. Brazilian Bruno Kawauch has a rail that would make any player envious. As I say in Brazil, Carnival in Rio is great. The main event at the Rio is greater. Reporter representing the state of Washington well. As they say in Washington, a Granny Smith apple a day keeps the bad beats away. At the secondary feature table, J.C. Tran and his seriously impressive poker resume. They say it everywhere, this guy can play. Two bracelets, six main event caches in 10 years. Tran in fourth, as you see, the 0-1 main event champ, Carlos Mortensen in seventh. Another loud rail here is for the local favorite, Jay Farber, the Las Vegas VIP host in third place. The bottom half of the 18 players remaining topped by David Benefield. The 27-year-old Benefield, arguably as talented as any player left in the field, but frankly, the Ivy Leaguer might be just a little too smart for my tastes. Mm, just because Phil says you're maybe the best tournament player of our generation, I'm going to let this one go. 
Which generation is it? We apparently are not of your generation. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Carlos, <laughs> we're the old guys. Porter and Mortensen both in their early 40s. Grimmel House 32. The others at this table in their 20s. Interesting dynamic here. Seven players under the average stack. What does that mean for Rep Porter? It means his stack is a little more powerful. At the other table, he'd be short. Sylvain Lusley, the big stack, no matter who you compare him to, and a good seat. Mortensen and Benefield to his right will help. I expect Lusley to pound away at this table. There is a new chip in play, the almond color chip worth 250000 Blinds at 120,000, 240 with a 40,000 chip ante. Carlos folds it to David Benefield on the button, ace queen off. 27 year old Texan native living in New York City with a raise to a half million. Loosely with pocket kings. Loosely with very little tournament experience, but he says he thinks he has a big edge when he's playing a deep stack. And he's deep stacked now as chip leader. Pretty successful online player. Please. And that's. A re-raise from the chip leader to a million five, folded now back to Benefield. I think the poker code, which you mentioned recently, Lon, required Benefield to raise when everyone folded to him on the button. Does the poker code say anything about ace-queen? <laughs> Your poker code does, and Benefield going against the grain there makes the call. So Luce Lee and Benefield, the flop. King, queen, four, a set of kings for Luce Lee. Middle pair, top kicker for Benefield. A check from Luce Lee. When we started day seven with 27 players, Benefield was 27th in chips. He's now 10th with 18 left. Benefield proceeds with caution wisely. Seven of spades, the Kings can't be beat. And loosely reaching for chips now. Loosely started playing poker when he was in business school. I don't think the hoodie was allowed in business school. <laughs> and that's a million four hundred fifty thousand from Loosely with his set. Benefield was a member of his high school choir. At that time, I assume he was not allowed to cup his hand in front of his mouth. <laughs> Boy, a helpless feeling for us and the viewers at home who see Benefield putting more chips into the middle. Benefield drawing dead, dead, dead. River card now, loosely feeling very much alive. Eight of hearts, another low card on the board. Let's see how much loosely thinks he can get out of Benefield on the river. Five. He announces 2.5 million. 2 million. Ah, the joys of Ace Queen. <laughs> Benefield getting better than three and a half to one on a call here. And David Benefield puts in the oh. chips, crashes headlong into the French chip monster. Benefield with hand on head, that indicates a headache. Loosely ups his chip count to almost 26 and a half million. He can barely contain his joie de vivre. 110 big blinds and Benefield, just when he was in reach of the top nine, plummets to 17th place. Just 15 big blinds, now the second shortest stack in the room. That's unfortunate. So Benefield begins the climb again. The payout bumps coming more rapidly now. The next three out earn almost 358,000 bucks. At the secondary table, the shortest stack in the room, Jan Nakalato, four bet shoved with queens, but Matt Reed with aces is in line to take Nakalato's 10 big blinds. Nakalato trying to get to the final table as fellow Czech Republic pro Martin Stashko did in 2011. The flop 4-8 deuce, Nakalato gets no glimmer of hope in that flop. Turn card now. Five of hearts. The song remains the same for Jan Nakalato. Six, seven of hearts. Yeah. Nakalato's got to have a queen. River card is a nine. Reads aces stand up to the all in. And Jan Nakalato done with his 2013 main event. Boy, Nakalato's so quick on his feet. If he wants, he can go around the table a second time. 18th place for Nakalato in his first ever World Series of Poker Cash. Nice hand. Pocket aces, heads up, usually brings a smile to your face. It's even nicer when they have a yeah. hand. It's nicer to get aces. 6,352 players paid $10,000 each to play in this 2013 main event. Just 17 remain from that massive field. 
for those viewers just picking up on the event now, or for those of you looking for more patented Norman Chad wisdom, Norman, what are the best storylines to follow? Norman Chad wisdom. <laughs> That's got a nice ring to it, huh? Uh, yeah. Well, two storylines in my mind stand out. Carlos Mordenson, the 2001 world champion, so close to joining Johnny Moss, Doyle Brunson, Stu Unger, and Johnny Chan as the only players with multiple main event titles. And then there's J.C. Tran, a beautiful family, a great player, six main event caches in the last 10 years. The J.C. might as well stand for just consistent. I'll give you some Norman Chad wisdom. J.C. Tran's one wise guy. J.C.'s poker wisdom has earned him millions during his career. Tran currently in fourth place with 17 main event players remaining. Action here at this feature table on Rep Porter. He won his World Series bracelets in 08 and 2011. Sitting with almost 7.7 .7 million, King of Hearts for Rep and the King of Diamonds. Porter rotated between options trading and poker after college, but once the money got bigger in poker, he stuck with it. There's a raise to a half million on the Brazilian pro, Bruno Cavouch. He's got an ace with an eight and folds to Mikhail Brimmelhaus, the Dutch pro with pocket aces. Kings versus aces. Bye bye, Rep. As he ponders his idea for getting maximum value from the Aces, let's hear how Phil Hellmuth would play this situation. McKeel, sweet spot for you. Pocket Aces, yum, yum. So if I'm in your spot, 30% of the time I'm going to smooth call and let some people in. That's dangerous, though, because it's only 500K. Maybe somebody flops a set. It's very hard to fold aces. Maybe they flop two pair. You're letting in some hands that could really crush you. I would always look at Rep Porter or my opponent, whoever it is. If I think they're strong, I re-raise because you never know. They might just get it all in before the flop. So McKeel. With the call opening the door for anyone who dares. Well, poker bratties is not Brimmelhaus's first language. And no takers. Big blind. Alex Livingston folds, so heads up. Porter might have gotten a break here. If Brimmelhaus three bets, who knows? All the chips could be in the middle already, and Porter headed for the exits. And an ace in the flop. Brimmelhaus flops a set. Porter looking at that less than percentage mark. Porter once worked at Safeway. If he worked at the register, that's good training for dealing with poker chips. <laughs> He's about 600,000. Bremelhaus sharing a suite during the main event with his Amsterdam buddy, Jorn Volthaus. And just a smooth call. Very tricky. Turn card now. Nine of diamonds and Rep Porter now drawing dead. Porter does check. Time for Brimmelhaus to start boogieing. This is his fourth main event, but first cash. He does have two final tables at the World Series of Poker. Brimmelhaus puts out 725,000. 725 into a pot of 2.9 million? That bet smells like day old loot fish. Come and get it, come and get it. And Porter cannot resist, it looks like. He got calling chips in his hand and does call. Well, the smooth call by Bremelhaus on the flop has confused Porter. River card now. Four of hearts. With that board, the percentage next to Bremelhaus's name really should be 105%. Porter checks again. 2.6. 2.6 million. And Bremelhaus turning up the heat. 2.6 million. Yeah, to call this would be for nearly half of Porter's remaining chips. Rep does manage to kick in the Kings. Bremelhaus will take that pot and move over 12 million now. Porter does take the hit, but if no ace hits the board, it could have been much bloodier for Rep Porter. He's in 12th place right now. So a fortunate pre-flop distribution lands Bremelhaus a big pot. More day seven after this. Day seven of the main event has dashed hopes of some and given hope to others. It'd be a hundred bucks to see it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you can. All you right. can show too. Thank you. Come on. So many outs. So many outs. He has nines. I call. Here we go. Yes, sir. That's one player who has enjoyed success on day seven, Mark Etienne McLaughlin, who plays a game back in Canada that may remind you of your youth. 
it's really important to be well balanced because if you're always thinking of one thing and it's getting really important in your life, when that thing goes wrong, it takes all the place in your life. That's why I like dodgeball so much. You just forget about all the bad things and just thinking about killing the person in front of you. Come with me. We are about to play some uh, funky dodgeball. They're all crazy. They're all very, very funny. We always have a good time. Yeah, well, the group we have here is, uh, you know, mostly poker players. Uh, we try to hang out together as much as we can. So, uh, yeah, we train hard. Yeah, we look a little ridiculous, but we're out there to have fun. Let's go! Mark's probably the best player in there, so he's going to be my number one target. I always try to take out the best player first. Well, you know, dodgeball is a little bit like poker, you know? Uh, you got to be able to play hard, take a lot of chances, be aggressive. But you want to play smart at the same time, you know? So we play as a team, as a group, uh, and just try to make the best moves uh, whenever we can. Holy <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> It was a blast. I'm sure we're gonna do it again and we will do it each each week and have a tradition here and playing dodgeball and other sports. Smoker, 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 smoker! By the way, that dodgeball event will be shown on the Ocho next week. Now back to the main event here on ESPN. Mark Etienne with Ace King off facing an under the gun raise from Jay Farber holding Queens. McLaughlin. Starting the hand with almost 17 million. Does not repop it, he calls. Incidentally, I turned down a dodgeball scholarship from the University of Phoenix to go to the University of Maryland. <laughs> JC Tran now with the button and ace queen. And he'll come along. Three premium hands here. The main event becomes about managing your premium hands. Obviously, you want to win with them, but you can't overplay them. Yes, salute you on the big blind. Might be a little bored, but he is getting almost 9-1 to one with his 9-7 off. Four players see a flop of six King Jack. McLaughlin catches the king to grab a big advantage. Castelluccio checked. Farber now. With his 9% pocket queens. Farber like Sylvan Loosely with very little tournament experience. He checks to McLaughlin now. Top pair, top kicker. 600,000. Tran, of course, with tons of tournament experience. And he just has a great feel for it all. Instinctively, JC just puts together the pieces to the puzzle. JC with a Broadway draw now. We'll make that call. Castelluccio got no luck on the flop, and he's gone. Now back to Farber. Farber with the best tattoos here, but not the best hand. Farber makes the call. So McLaughlin with the best hand will have to dodge a queen or a 10 there coming up. Sorry about that. Turn card. Seven of hearts does nobody no good. Farber has the action. He checks. Seven of hearts, very safe card for top pair, top kicker. Occasionally, poker is easier than dodgeball. <laughs> McLaughlin now. Two and a quarter million. McLaughlin betting more than half the pot, making it tough for Tran to stick around. Tran just with that draw, and now it's in the muck. Farber doesn't look like he's in calling posture. And he does fold. Caution the headline word with that hand. McLaughlin will drag the pot. Now approaching 20 million chips. He's in second place right now. He doesn't have a dodgeball player's build. He really should stick to poker. <laughs> if you have a friend of the game, still it's almost like being in the game yourself. Passions run high on the rails. So much at stake. We go to the feature table now. Folded to Bruno Kawawuch in the cutoff with ace-queen. I mentioned Carnival earlier, Lon. The distance from Rio to the Rio is 6,209 miles. Just under 10,000 kilometers. Well, thank you, Archimedes. <laughs> Bruno raised it up. Benefield with Trez. And he says all in. That's almost 3.4 million. Shoot, come. Come. 14 big blinds left for Benefield. It's a little over three. Wooch wants a count. I call. He does make the call. So David Benefield has put himself out there at risk of being our 17th place finisher. Kawauch calls for half his stack. Nice. Benefield, though, is the one with the made hand. And the rails get active. The Brazilian crowd trying to rattle the dealer, I believe. <laughs> Here's a flop. 
Jack. Trey Tan, a set for Benefield. What a card to see. A Broadway draw, though, for Cabo Uch. Look at Benefield. No emotion from the eyeline master on a flop that might extend his main event. Benefield looks like he's just been told that he needs to get a termite inspection report before he closes escrow on his next house. Eight of clubs, double the outs now with a double gutter for Bruno. Yeah, and indeed, Benefield knows not to celebrate too soon. Now a king or a nine would bust David Benefield. The river card is a six, and David Benefield escapes the axe again. Well, he can smile now. Well, if he wants to. Kawa Uch now the short stack in the field after losing almost half his stack to the very dangerous player. He really can smile now. David Benefield. Wow, what a comeback. We've documented the story before and now making a major day seven comeback from 27 of 27 to the middle of the pack. It's still anyone's game. The sun beginning to set on the main event. We're late on day seven with just 17 players remaining. There's 13-time bracelet winner Phil Helmuth. He was eliminated on day three. What's up, Philly? The camera always seems to find Phil, or Phil always seems to find the camera. Under the gun, Ryan Reese raised it up to a half million with aces folded to Alex Livingston in the big blind with ace queen suited. Livingston recently went to Africa and climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. I'm, I'm surprised you can't do that online yet. Lolly. I call. Livingston raised Reese all in. Reese with the easy call. I don't know if Phil Halmuth would approve of Livingston's pushing from the big blind with ace queen, and now Ryan Reese in great shape to double up. Reese with a magic elixir of aces on the verge of making a big leap up the leaderboard. Here's the flop. 7-10 deuce. Great flop for Reese. No hearts for Livingston. Livingston needs a runner, runner, or he'll be short stacked. Hey, deuce. Queen, too. Deuce. Queen's okay. Hey. A big moment for both of these players. Turn card, another seven. That makes it official. Alex drawing dead. He'll relinquish over half his chips. Ryan Reese with a nice pot. Ace is just in time. Nice hand. He's up to almost eight million, and he sits in 10th place right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alex Livingston takes up residence in the cellar with only 13 big blinds. Gentlemen, I salute you all. My hat's off to all of you. Nice round. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Very nice round. Of course. Bill Helmuth paying his respects. Well, when a fan runs out onto the field during a game, networks don't show it because they don't want to encourage it. Why do we show this? Carlos. The man. Carlos. A couple of former yeah, world champs. Team five or something. I guess it's possible Phil was taking food orders. <laughs> Top stacks with a real balancing issue right now. How aggressive should they be? Loosely, Lehavut, Farber wrestling with that right now. Rep Porter with ace 10. Halmuth must have told Rep to fold ace 10 suited under the gun. Wow, big fold. Kawa Uch folds a weak king now. Brummel House with ace queen of spades. Worthy of a raise to a half million, so says he. Queens for Mortensen. Carlos was playing chess in a Madrid club back in the mid-1990s. They introduced Texas Hold'em there, and it was bye-bye chess. Just a call with the Queens from Carlos. Small blind Livingston folds to the big blind Ryan Reese. Paging Ryan Reese. <laughs> Tanya. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Reese working on a Carlos Mortensen chip sculpture <laughs> and forgot he had cards. Can you hear me? It's just you and me, man. Good luck. He does fold. Heads up now. You check behind? <laughs> Nine trays, six. Bermo House misses. And he checks it to Carlos with the pocket queens. 600,000. End of hand? Hardly. Nope. Can't ignore that. 600,000 for Bermo House. Out of position with ace high. Bremel House plows on. Turn card now. Seven of hearts, another miss for Brimmel House. He checks his no pair. It is my contention that when you wear sunglasses indoors, you do not even know what day of the week it is. <laughs> it happens to most players on day seven of the main event. Carlos Mortensen with a million one hundred thousand. 
Bromwell House just with Ace Queen. And he will give it up. Mortensen stacking chips again. I never understand why they like to check their cards at the end of a hand when they're not called. It's like looking in the mirror one more time after you're done shaving. I don't get it. Carlos Mortensen into sixth place. Bremel House keeps his spot on the virtual final table, but does slip to ninth. This high dollar version of musical chairs continues. Back to the other table now. J.C. Tran is in the big blind. He holds a 9-8. Fabian Ortiz under the gun, taking his turn with Ace Queen, open for half a million. Ortiz, the former DJ and currently nightclub owner. JC calls for 260,000 more. And these two will see a flop of 9 7 King. Tran with middle pair. Ortiz left way behind with Ace High. This hour has been like an infomercial on why not to play Ace Queen. <laughs> JC checked to the Razor. The Razor continues with a half a million. And now Tran with a piece of that board. And JC with the call. Tran is a lot like Mordenson in terms of trusting his post-flop reads on his opponent. Four of hearts on the turn. Tran still best. Fun fact for you, Winston Churchill once said his two biggest challenges as prime minister were dealing with Joseph Stalin at the Potsdam Conference and playing ace-queen correctly post-flop. <laughs> check, check now. Free river card. Six of spades. You see Tran with a 100% next to his name, representing the pair of nines that he has. And he checks again. And all in from Ortiz with ace high. Wow. Fabian Ortiz will try to slip a river bluff past J.C. Tran for his last 11 big blinds. That is a board that could present problems for J.C. Well, J.C.'s got a comfortable stack. This would be for about 20% of his remaining chips. And now Tran's reading ability is really tested big time here. Ortiz bluff shoving for his tournament life. Ortiz swinging back and forth in his seat like he's on a disco floor. The flush draw got there on the river. Tran retracing the clues of the hand. And JC makes that call. How does he do that? And Fabian Ortiz is gone. That's why he's JC Tran. And Fabian Ortiz has a fabulous main event run with a failed bluff shove. Out in 17th for nearly $358,000. It's one thing to make that call early in the main event, but so close to the final table makes it all the more impressive for J.C. Tran. He's an, he's an animal. <laughs>16 players left, but with nine at one table, seven at the other, the player in the big blind, Mark Newhouse, switched tables. The only time I ever had to switch tables to balance them out was at Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner 1986. <laughs> so eight players at each table while Mark settles in at the secondary table. We go back to Carlos Mortensen at our featured table. There's 11.3 million chips. Certainly nothing guaranteed, but with his skills and insight at this stage of the game, how do you bet against him? A raise to 600,000 with 10-7 of hearts. Folded to Sylvain Lusley on the button. Ace, six of spades. Lusley benefited when the French online poker market started to boom. Just about the same time the U.S. online market died. The chip leader makes the call. Still loosely moved to London. There's a good-sized French poker community there. The blinds fold. How much should we get? 11 pie. All right, here's the flop. Six ace jack, top and bottom pair for Luz Lee. Mortensen missed and is in a deep hole. It's Carlos reaching anyway, 600,000. I'm not quite sure what Carlos is drawing to. <laughs> Maybe he has a good river insurance policy. Luz Lee. Again, feeling very comfortable after the flop. Another smooth call from him. Indeed, loosely content to let the Matador lead and control the action. Turn card. Deuce of spades leaves Carlos drawing dead. Well, the good news for Carlos, though, Lon, is that he is drawing to a pair. <laughs> and Carlos, trying to be convincing, bets a million and a quarter. 
Another call from Luz Lee. You know, actually, if Luz Lee just had a weak ace rather than two pair, Mortensen's line of attack here might have worked. River card is another deuce. Will Carlos shut down or go with the triple barrel bluff? Oh, boy. Looks like Carlos is intent on bluffing off a big chunk of his stack here. Carlos Mortensen with 2.3 million now. Thank you. And a call. And Luce Lee will take a nice pot. Nice. Thank you. And by the way, the chip leader showing he played the weak ace there. That's good for his image if he wants others to look at him as a bit loose. Mortensen's donation of 40% of his chips drops him into ninth, and he just may have used up all of his bluffing chips. Luce Lee ups his total to nearly 34 million. He's a professional based in London, as you mentioned, but incredibly, this is his first World Series of Poker Cash. Not a bad way to break the seal. Another deep French run here at the main event. Antoine Saoud finished third in 2009, and of course, Gail Bowman just missed the final table last year in 10th place. I played it so tricky, you know, just flat, flat and flat again. I, I was feeling it was going to uh, to free barrel the, the, on this ball, so. Could you lead a straight mark? Did you see his hand? Yeah, he stood marked. The fans crowded so closely around the playing arena here. Much like the old back room, bare knuckled bouts, you'd imagine John L. Sullivan headlining. Is he there? He is not here this year. Mark Etienne McLaughlin has ace nine offsuit. I assume Jonathan Duhamel will be on McLaughlin's rail if he makes November nine. Absolutely. Matt Reed folds his button. Now in the small blind is Chris Lynn, former Wall Streeter, 10 nine of spades. What a force Chris Lynn has been at this main event, but his aggression tempered lately by the short stack. Owen. And with that short stack at the table, all in for almost 3.4 million. 14 big blinds for Lynn. McLaughlin with the so-so ace. 3.3. It would be for 15% of his stack. I called. Say call. Call. McLaughlin does make the call and has the desperate Chris Lynn dominated as well. Yeah, I probably don't push if I'm Chris Lind, but in his defense, it's just bad luck for him. His two cards aren't live there, and many times in this spot, he would just win it outright without a flop. Well, the game plan for Lind right now is to get really, really lucky against Mark Etienne McLaughlin. All right, here's the flop. For Queen King, McLaughlin's still ahead, but Lind picks up a king high straight draw. McLaughlin trying to subdue the feisty Chris Lind. Lind at risk. Turn card. Deuce of diamonds. That's good. That's good. And that gives McLaughlin a flush draw while taking a couple of outs from Lind. Lind sits back down. He's thinking positive thoughts. The river card is not what Chris Lind needs. McLaughlin has the flush, and Chris Lind has lost all his chips. Great run for Chris Lind. I hope he can get a new car now. His old one's still sitting out there in the Rio parking lot. The one's high-flying Chris Lind has his wings clipped. A strong six-figure payday will ease the pain soon. A nice bump to McLaughlin stack as he moves up a notch into fourth place on the main event leaderboard. McLaughlin is an unassuming chip accumulator, no? Yeah, I just want to know how much it was, yeah. It was not quite the financial collapse of 2008, but former investment banker Chris Lynn goes from chip leader to out in 16th place. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that bite? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. We're down to 15 players after the eliminations of Jan Nakalotl, Fabian Ortiz, and Chris Lynn. Each leave the main event with $357,655. At the secondary table, J.C. Tran with pocket sevens called the under-the-gun raise from Sergio Castelluccio with ace-king. So they'll see a flop. Tran in the big blind. The flop 10-9-4 improves neither, leaving Tran's pocket pair in the lead. 
Tran like Carlos Mortensen or say Phil Hellmuth content to see flops and outplay opponents post-flop. Tran checked. A check. The Italian pro checks. Turn card. Tray of hearts. Well, who will step up after that blank? Among Tran's early poker role models were Scotty Wynn and David Pham, both like JC, born in Vietnam. JC Tran has chips in hand. 660,000 with his pocket sevens. I'm not sure who Castelluccio's poker role models are, but he says he's a big fan of film director Federico Fellini. And why not? The man has as many Oscars as Scotty Wynn has bracelets. <laughs> Five. Good knowledge. Castelluccio, who has grown his stack every day at the main event with a raise to 1,440,000. Oh, Castelluccio testing trans resolve here. The thing about JC is he just goes about his business. You look at him and you can't tell if he's about to three bet or about to pick out tangerines at the market. <laughs> well, Sergio may think he has the best hand at this stage. And JC, I think, has the same thought. And there's a call. At the moment, this is not La Dolce Vita for Sergio <laughs> Castelluccio. River card, queen of spades. Trans sevens are best. Three over cards out there, and he checks. I checked. Sergio gives JC a break and checks back. Did you hit a queen? Tran sniffed out that raise on the turn and then doesn't even have to make a decision on the river. JC Tran dragging another pot after another fine read. Castelluccio heading in the Good other job. direction. Some players learning a hard lesson about JC Tran tonight. When I saw the, the Queen River, I was like, why didn't I jam the turn? But then he checked, so. What's Sacramento, up? California's J.C. Tran living up to his poker resume here. At the noisy feature table venue, Sylvain Loosley ruling the roost with nearly 29 million chips. Second best at this table is David Benefield, but he is 16 million behind the French pro. Bruno Kawauch says Brazilian poker fans have transferred their soccer crowd mentality to the poker arena. <laughs> They're fun. Reporter with pocket sevens. A raise to 600,000. There is Bruno. With the national colors on his jacket. Pocket tens. Short stack in the tournament. How much you have? 4.1. Porter has Kawauch covered. Not by much. I'm all in. Oh, Uch re raises all in for almost 2.9 million. Any takers? An ace for Benefield. He folds to lose Lee. A weaker ace. Alex Livingston gives up his big blind. It comes back to Porter. He makes the call for almost two thirds of his chips. Porter with a quick call, and Kawauch has him crushed. Unless he gets lucky, this is going to leave Porter with four big blinds. Kawauch's rail on their feet and very excited at the possibility of this double up. Rep Porter trying to come from behind. <laughs> Here is the flop. And a seven in the window. Porter runs down the bigger hand. Every time I start to count him out, Rep Porter hits a card. Porter's been living large in the big moments here at the main event, and now Bruno Kalauch is all but out of here. Bruno's going to need a lot of help to pull this one out of the fire. Des, 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 Des chanting for a 10 in Portuguese. Queen of Hearts, no help to Kalauch. Yeah, it sounds like Kauch has home field advantage, but the deck does not care much. Bruno Kauch has to have a 10. The river card. Another queen means Rep Porter's full house will knock out Bruno Kauch after a second straight impressive main event appearance. Good game. Well, that wasn't quite the 1950 Uruguay-Brazil okay. World Cup match, considered one of the biggest upsets in soccer history, but it was close. Bruno could be a strong fantasy pick for the main event next year. 15th place. I was so sure you were going to win. I'm so sure we're going to make the final table together. Rep, how do you do it? Well, you know. 
Somebody's got to get lucky. I've yeah. watched him win King Queen versus Kings, which was awesome. Winning that pot, probably not much of a surprise to Rep Porter, who has had more than his fair share of lucky hands at this main event. Tournaments with 6,500 people. If you don't get lucky once or twice, you're not going to win. He went all in with 17 big blinds left. Just a turn card ahead. Is a queen. Rep Porter manages to hang on and double up and then some. Two-time Brisa winner Rep Porter all in with King Queen of Hearts. River card is a oh, heart. Prete goes busto. Rep Porter gets the heart he needed to stay in the game. Wow. Porter, former options trader turned poker pro, was down to 16 big blinds, pushed with the big pocket pair, but Brimble House has a bigger pair. And now the flop, and Porter scores the set. Rep Porter doubles to over three and a half million. Porter grasping for hope. The river card is a nine. Porter spikes the two outer to survive. Let's go, baby. Wow. Let's go. Porter with a quick call, and Kawauch has him crushed. Unless he gets lucky, this is going to leave Porter with four big blinds. And a seven in the window. Porter runs down the bigger hand. Just a huge adrenaline rush. I mean, like your old body's like shaking from the. <laughs> it's crazy. Did you like the shove with the King Queen, by the way? It might have been a little thin, but I like it. I don't know. Just pure. It can't be that bad. I don't know. Oh. I, I probably would have folded, but like I, I wouldn't have been like ecstatic about it. Then there was the tens against queens, Great. and today there was the nine on the river. Yeah, yeah, the nine on the river was huge. Yeah. Porter definitely lucky to be here, while the celebration of Bruno Kawauchi's impressive finish is just getting started. Tonight's bracelet moments are presented by PokerNews.com. The Poker Players Championship is the event that every serious pro wants to win. Eight different games and a 50K buy-in means business. And this year, it was British pro Matthew Ashton who was up to the task, becoming the youngest ever PPC winner at age 25 and winning $1.7 million, along with having his name added to the Chip Reese Trophy. It is the tournament I wanted to win the most. Just going to keep playing poker and enjoying it and try and win another one. This is the eighth year of the event that became the Poker Players Championship. Michael Mizraki has won it twice in 2010 and again in 2012. And Scotty Wynn, the only player to win the main event and the Poker Players Championship. Back to play, Sylvain Luce Lee called a raise with 9-7 and we'll see a flop with Mikhail Brimmelhaus who raised with King-10. Flop is King-4-7, middle pair for Luce Lee, but top pair for Brimmelhaus. Middle pair for Luce Lee, Lon, top pair for Brimble House. We know what that means. Loosely goes with the four-fingered open palm check. Brimble House now uses four fingers plus the thumb to make a bet. A bet of 600,000. And loosely, it appears, with a five-fingered call. Impressive. These foreigners have a whole new level of the game of poker. <laughs> Turn card. Queen of Hearts. The four-fingered open palm check first practiced by Toulouse Lautrec at a Paris home game in 1889. And employed once again by Sylvain Luz Lee and Brummel House. River card now is another seven and bang with trip sevens Luz Lee's in the driver's seat. Toulouse Lautrec, though a fabulous painter, was never this lucky. That's what we call a Rep Porter River card <laughs> for Sylvain Luz Lee. <laughs> Sylvain Luz Lee now, the chip leader, with a million two hundred thousand. Uh, I don't like the river, but I got a call. I call. And you gotta pay. No. 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 House knew it. And Luz Lee goes with the double four-fingered bridge, waiting for his chips. The French pro having one of those very special day sevens at the main event. McKeel down to twelfth place. Damn river. Yeah, that river means Brimmel House is left with 16 big blinds. As Sylvain Luce Lee gets stronger. At the other table, Sergio Castelluccio is in big trouble. He's all in with ace five, and he was met with an easy call from Amir Lehovet's pocket kings. Less than 15 big blinds, pushes with the ace, and tough luck, Amir Lehovet with a big hand. All right, here's the flop. Eight deuce queen, miss, miss, miss for Castelluccio. 
Lehavut, like Mark Etienne McLaughlin, is an unassuming chip accumulator. Turn card. Another queen, Castelluccio running out of cards. Castelluccio needs a three outer, only an ace saves him. River card is a deuce. Sergio Castelluccio has fallen out of the main event field, gone in 14th place. Lon, your Italian namesake, went about as far as he could. He's got more poker chops than you, though. He does indeed. 451,000 his reward, and he leaves with a smile. Te l'ho detto. <laughs> For Lehavut, that pot pushes him to the top of the list with over 30 million chips. He doesn't do it with fancy play or long tanks, but Amir Lehavut is the one to beat now at the main event. Chip leader with just 13 left. The man with just shy of 30 million chips looks down at two black aces. Well, he's a big stack. He's going to be opening a lot of pots. In this case, he's got aces. And with the blinds at 150,000, 300,000, that's a min raise to Alex Livingston with ace queen. And Alex with just 10 big blinds left. All in. And he says all in. Little choice, but little chance. And Livingston's got a figure he's ahead of most of Loosely's opening hands. Yeah, indeed. But yeah, there's a quick call. Screen and aces again, twice. Ah. We didn't do. Second time he shoved with ace queen and run into aces. At least I don't get that sick feeling in the pit of my stomach when I get sucked out on all in for a 20 million spot. All right, guys, call for cards. Give me some hearts. I think he's talking to the half of the rail that doesn't speak English. Only crickets is what he hears. All right, here's the flop. Livingston at risk and all done. A quick and merciful end to Alex Livingston's did, hand and main event. Yeah, man. Yeah, buddy, good luck. Yeah, yeah guy you got to root for, Lonnie. He plays well, he acts well, got to wish him well. 13th place. Yeah, good luck. And there'll be quite a pizza party at Alex's North of Brooklyn Pizzeria in Toronto as Loosely takes the last of Alex Livingston's chips. And that puts Sylvan back in the chip lead, every hand creating reverberations among the final 12. Amir Lehavut's run at the top didn't last long. Five players over 20 million, including J.C. Tran. Three players on the outside looking in at the final table. Let's go down to Kara Scott now. Can you describe for the folks at home the sensation of going from 6,352 players all the way to here? Well, it was a fun ride. Um, I was down to 12K on the end of day one and ran up to 250. And then I had chips pretty much the whole tournament until uh, came in today about a little below average. But it, it was a great ride. It was, it was a lot of fun, obviously. It's kind of what every poker player dreams of, so yeah. What does this kind of finish do for your poker career and your visibility? Um, yeah, I guess it makes me more of a name, but uh, I don't really care too much about any of that stuff. Uh, I'm just happy to have a big score and hopefully keep it going. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, Kurt. Poker is a game for everyone. The cards don't care about your experience, your age, or your nationality. So that's why it's not that surprising to see a 26-year-old Frenchman with exactly zero World Series of Poker caches before this main event leading the main event. At some point, you just feel like you're um, the hope for friends. You know you have to do your best, uh, not only for, for you, uh, but for the whole French community. Yeah. With 12 players left, Sylvain Lusli heads a fearsome group that includes Carlos Mortensen and JC Tran. Let me hustle, not you. Is it my hustle or yours? I'm not betting you. 8.3 million for first, just three eliminations until we have our November 9. Bon chance. Main event, day seven. We are this close to knowing the 2013 November 9. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Rio. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. Two tables of six players. Our eventual champion is at one of them. Frenchman Sylvain Lusli has the inside track, but there's a lot of poker left. Spain's Carlos Mortensen in the middle of the pack, but there's nothing average about him. Actually, I think he's about five foot ten. That's pretty average. It's been tough to figure out Canadian Mark Etienne McLaughlin. He's a tattoo artist with no tattoos. I can't figure him out. An international top three. Then Americans begin to fill out the rest. Jay Farber in fourth, JC Tran in fifth. In ninth place, the man who has had nine lives in this main event, the indestructible Rep Porter. 
three players on the outside looking in at the November 9. Reese the Beast, the youngest left at age 23. These three players all in the red zone, each with less than 20 big blinds. A very talented group at this stage of the main event. Perhaps no one as talented as that man, J.C. Tran. Yeah, but I think he's also average height. I might even be taller than him. Amir Lehavat, one of four bracelet winners left. He's quiet and he is lethal. Each table playing with just six players, but there are more chips at this table. Easier to chip up, easier to bust out. Just ask Jay Farber. Farber is sitting at poker's version of a rock and a hard place. Lehavot to his left, Tran to his right. Tran is the fourth biggest stack at this table, but fifth overall. JC will spend shorthanded play taking flops out of position against a series of big stacks. Even he might want to play cautiously. You can say goodbye to the orange 5K chips. The denominations are 25,000, 100,000, and 250,000. JC Tran with pocket aces under the gun. Like a lot of winning poker players, he used to have a bad habit. He'd lose at everything else, betting sports, blackjack, pie gal. He doesn't do that anymore. He just wins at poker. Blinds at 150 and 300,000, a 50K ante. There's a raise to 650 from Tran. Jay Farber, 8-7 of hearts. The VIP host played virtually no hands the first couple of levels of day seven, and his patience has paid off. He's still here in the mix for the November 9. A lot of people like this hand. And there is a call over to Amir Lehavat. A big stack with 28 million. Jack five of hearts. Amir thinking about it, but folds. On the button, Mark Etienne McLaughlin with pocket eights. Boy, shorthanded especially, you love a pocket pair, but Tran's got the aces. Mark Etienne with the call. Small blind Matt Reed. 10-9 off suit into the muck. Well, sometimes a hand like aces actually requires a very cautious play, particularly post-flop. You tend to overvalue a big pair, and it can hurt you. All right, three players. Trans aces way ahead. The flop, king, deuce, six. Trans aces are still best. First to act. Very safe flop, but he does play it cautiously. Norman, he listened to you. Maybe this is the start of something big. Maybe JC will be the first member of the Norman Chad poker team. Uh, JC is just Chad poker. Mark Etienne after Farber checked. McLaughlin with a pocket eight, bets 875. Well, we'll see here if he's just Chad Poker or hmm. just check raising. JC Tran with the hammer with the pocket aces. McLaughlin's thought process may be correct. Nobody hit the flop, but JC's got aces and he makes the call. Barber folds. So the two pocket pairs will see the turn. Almost four and a half million in the middle. Turn card is another deuce. Tran with aces up now. Checks again. Just Chad Poker. Mm -hmm. JC content to check call the big hand. Kind of how he played Queens versus Morgenstern back when there was a Morgenstern. They both check. River card is an ace. And JC didn't need it, but it is comforting to wind up with aces full. That's a good card for JC, but <laughs> the only reason it's a bad card for him is it looks like the flush got there. It's going to make it harder for Mark Etienne to call. JC, two million six fifty. Hmm. Mark Etienne thinks. Looking at a paired board, two over cards and three clubs out there. What you got, buddy? Does he have to tell him? <laughs> and is JC going to fall for this buddy stuff? JC says, I'll show you if you call. <laughs> but Mark Etienne folds, and JC will take another pot. And that pushes him past Jay Farber into fourth place overall. You know, I think JC wants to show him he has aces full. I think JC wants to tell him he has aces full. I think JC is dying to show and tell him he has aces full. We spoke earlier about the best stories to emerge from this main event. Carlos Mortensen and J.C. Tran are still in the hunt. But with 10 other players still remaining, surely, Norman, there are others who have caught your attention and keen eye. Take your pick, tall and good-looking. <laughs> David Benefield goes from online phenom to learning Mandarin to teaching us about the benefits of a balanced life. Mark Etienne McLaughlin runs successful businesses and runs successful bluffs. Jay Farber is a VIP host here in Las Vegas who might get to host his own championship party. 
I'm a big fan of this group. It's the group in here that I'm not so sure about. Norman, can I talk to you outside for a minute? A World Series bracelet worthy of its own red carpet. And look at the gap loosely has opened up at this feature table over 21 million more than David Benefield. All right, action on loosely. Ace Jack of Hearts. Lucy's got an I'm going to the November 9 look to him. I don't think he came all the way here from France to hang out at Bally's Paris and stare at the fake Eiffel Tower. Actually, he lives in London right now. I don't think he came all the way here from England to hang out at Bally's London and stare at the fake Big Ben. <laughs> Bowl it around to the big blind McKeel Bremel House. Jack Nine off suit. Bremel House trying to become the first player from the Netherlands ever to make the main event final table. Playing with just 18 big blinds, and he calls for 300,000 more, though fully dominated by Luz Lee. The flop is Jack 6'10, no hearts, a jack for both. Luz Lee with top kicker. McKeel checked. We have two six-handed tables right now. Most home games are probably six-handed, particularly with middle-aged guys who have trouble getting their wives to let them out of the house one <laughs> night a week. <laughs> a bet of 750000 from Luz Lee. Bremel House in a precarious spot here. He started this hand with only 18 big blinds. Luz Lee betting into him with the better hand, but Bremel House does have top pair. He's got a lot of those lavenders, Norman. A check raised to 2125 Good morning. All in. Loosely puts Bremel House all in. McKeel calls, and this may be the last hand he sees at this main event. Yeah, I guess Bremel House couldn't fold at that point, but he is in big trouble. I run good in the The YouTubers. Loosely looking to add to his big stack and take us one step closer to the November 9. 89 world champ Phil Helmuth looking on. Turn card, eight of hearts outside of the nine. That's the best card McKeel could ask for. Seven, I know for sure. I'm with him at the final, final table Seven of hearts, sure. right? Queen is okay. The, the lucky seven. Queen, nine or seven. Or McKeel, Brimblehouse is wham-boozled. The river card. Is a seven! Bremel House with runner, runner, straight to stay alive. That's scary. Sick. Bremel House is Dr. Run Good. <laughs> Luz Lee still with a big stack, but that win would have been sweet. Oh, so sick. So sick, Lot. <laughs> you just you just know. I just you know. Just I just run too good here. I, I don't know. <laughs> just as you. Six, we'll be there. Four, seven, the problem is everybody four, still seven, here seven, has run seven, insanely seven. good. So at some yeah. point, somebody has to mock. At the end. <laughs> McKeel gets a gift on day seven. Mullen. Cool. Everything going right for McKeel Brimmelhouse. Wow. Good morning. Cool. I run good in the land. One card from elimination twice and still here. So you, you use your one time this, <laughs> this time. No more one time. OK, OK. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I didn't use it. It was just there. Sometimes you know it's coming. You don't have to say it. Yeah. Porter knows all about that. So Bremel House still with a keen interest in this graphic, the payouts. 12th place finish worth almost 575000 which was what Bremel House was about to receive. Now he's still in the hunt for the big money, Norman. By the way, I've come up with a new rule for one times on all ins. Let's say you go all in and get snap called. You can use your one time and take it back. No, I was Never mind. Wow, groundbreaking. Queen 10 for Benefield, a raise to 600,000. Luz Lee now with ace jack of clubs. I'm sorry, Benefield just opened with queen mm -hmm. 10 offline? Yes. Sorry, That's David. not right. Yeah, I know. I'm flagging him for that. Luz Lee with a call. Ryan Reese with queens. When we were 10 players away from the money, Reese was all in with pocket queens against 10-8 on a jack 9-3 flop. His queens held, and here he is. He's picked up some chips recently. And he says he wants to re-raise it to 2225000 He started the hand now with over $8 million. Yeah, Well, where does that uh, leave uh, Queen 10? Yeah, Queen 10 is huh. out of the hand. What a fool he was. <laughs> Liz Lee now with ace-jack suited and a huge chip lead at this table. Pretty good hand, ace-jack of clubs. Big stack. But he's a little out of position. 
And what is Ryan Reese up to? And that gets a fold, and Ryan Reese takes it down without any pushback. That's worth 1.9 million new chips. There's nothing beast-like about pocket queens on the button. That's easy. He'll be a beast when he re-raises with 8-6 offsuit. You may be unimpressed, but back home, Ryan's got the full support of his family as he pursues his dream. Most people don't know much about me. I'm more than okay with that. We're in Waterford, Michigan right now, and this is where Ryan grew up. It's a special place for him. You know, he went to the same high school that his dad went to, so that's always been, you know, a special thing for him. Well, here is Our Lady of the Lakes, where I went to high school. It's a Catholic school. Sister Fran, she actually liked me a lot. I played poker here in homeroom every day. From here, I went to Card Sharks down the street, which is a charity poker room. And I dealt there and played there at the same time. Half of the money they make goes to charity, the other half goes to the people who own it. What's up, Johnny? I asked him, I was like, hey, what do you want to do with your life? And he said, I want to be a professional poker player. First time I ever played cash games was here. Our biggest goal is not only to achieve success for ourselves, but to show people that if you believe in it, you visualize it, it'll happen. He's always been pretty confident. He's, uh, he sets his mind to, to something, and, and that's what he does. He said, I'm going to graduate first, and then I'm just going to travel the world and you know, just, just enjoy it. And maybe I'll, I can make some money along the way. I'm 23 years old, and it's the first main event I played. Let's go, baby. Reese the Beast. <laughs> the kid is a Detroit Lions fan. He's endured enough. So let him pick up pocket queens on the button every once in a while. He deserves it. <laughs> the Beast supported at home and here at the Rio by, I guess, uh, his Beastie Boys and girls. Action folded to Reese. Pocket nines. He won $2,000 in his first online tournament while in college. A raise to 600000 to rep Porter with King Jack of Spades. And he says all in for almost six and a half million. Porter pushes with 21 big blinds left. He's been running good. Rep knocked me out on day two of the World Series horse event this summer on a three-outer, and he showed no remorse. I have not forgotten. <laughs> Mortensen in the big blind. Folds ace jack. Six and a half. Now back to the pocket nines of Brian Reese. And this is a challenging decision for the Beast. He'd have to call off about 60% of his stack here. And then, of course, he'd be flipping against Porter. Brian Reese makes the call. Tough call. And Rep Porter at risk again. Rep Porter with two over cards to the pocket pair of Reese. Good luck, Rep. Thank you. I know you'll win. I know you'll win. He could take it back right now under my one time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we got nines. We got nines. Nines, King Jig. All right, so Rep Porter trying to get lucky one more time. 4 8 Queen. Reese still ahead. The wrong paint for Porter in there. It goes from a coin flip for Porter now to being a 3 to 1 underdog to stay alive. River. River. Turn card is a five, bringing Porter to the very edge. Reese poised for the knockout. Porter needs a king or a jack. The river card is a seven. Reese will take the pot as Rep Porter has run out of chances at this main event. The two-time bracelet winner with his second top 50 main event finish so close to the November 9. A very strong payday of over $573,000 for Rep Porter. And Ryan Reese with a dose of vigor and almost 18 million chips. One more time for our and a well-deserved salute of appreciation for Rep Porter upon his exit. Ryan Reese, who made the call of his life and then was rewarded. The November 9 is that much more real for this 23-year-old. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high Roller Bowl 7 champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off! That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. 
What was that fight? Go to get.pokoco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Our last side action of the season, Phil Hellmuth, Burrito Maker. What do you want? I had a horrible summer, and now the Rio's gonna let me try out a few different new things. I need to make some money. I have two kids in college, so let's go see what it looks like. <laughs> Are you ready to work with Phil? Yes, yes, let's do it. I don't know, I don't want to screw up somebody's food. Oh, this juice? Not bad. Uh, get a Enjoy. Phil, you're really doing a good job. I, I, I overplayed my two tens. I had a bad summer. I got right, a job now. now. I'm hungry. All right. Oh, okay. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> Dolly, what would you like, sir? Cheese burrito. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to burn myself. I don't know what I'm doing. Dolly, you better play better than me or you're going to end up back here, like me. Yeah. <laughs> we got to take care of our extra special customers here. Thank you, sir. Doro Brunson, I love you, but Dolly, you ordered a cheese burrito. Cheese! Where I'm from, they call that a quesadilla. Eric Lindgren on the left, five caches and a bracelet this summer. Phil Helmuth, never a player of the year, as Lindgren was, but he had a final table this year. Pocket nines for Benefield. He opened it up for 600000 folded to Bremel House with King Jack. Benefield credits Phil Galfond and former housemate Tom Dwan for helping improve his game the most. Bremel House makes the call. Heads up. Five-handed at this table, six players at the other. Trey, Queen, King, top pair for Bremel House. And he checks it. Benefield also friends with Craig Marquis, who was ninth at the 2008 main event. Benefield finished 73rd that year. Preflop Razor checks back with what is now a very weak pair of nines. Eight of clubs. Bremel House was 25th in chips out of 27 when we started day seven. Benefield was 27th out of 27, yet both still here with a shot at the November nine. And just looking at that shot, it seems Carlos Mortensen's been card dead lately. <laughs> a million fifty thousand from Bremel House. When he was living with Tom Dwan, Benefield says just sweating dirt online was an education in itself. Now Benefield, how much does he believe the Dutch pro? Well, not much. Yeah, that dirt education not paying off right here. Four of hearts on the river, so top pair remains just that for McKeel. Durr would have hit a nine on the river. <laughs> David might be feeling a little better about his pocket nines after Bremelhaus checked the flop. And McKeel looks to lead out here on the river. Two and a quarter million. Bremelhaus bets about 60% of the pot. Benefield beflummoxed. Welcome to my world, son. <laughs> Big moment for Benefield. He's a little sick. Oh, King Jack. Ooh, I think that was the wrong bottle of water. He does make the call, and McKeel Bremelhaus got paid off. Yeah, Bremelhaus took the risk of checking that flop and it earned him two streets of value. That's kind of like buying an expensive ring, hoping the marriage works out. You might have just given someone you don't like much the most expensive gift of their life. David bumped down to 10th place now. Disaster. Well, short of disaster, but David not happy with how he played that hand. He does have plenty of good things going on in his life. He's back at school, producing movies, learning Mandarin. The kind of guy that uh, you'd like to bring home to mom. During his online phenom days, he was part of the Ship It Hollow Ballers crew. There's a good book about those guys, in particular Benefield and Andrew Robel, called Ship It Hollow Ballers by Jonathan Grodenstein and Storms Reback. To the secondary table, J.C. Tran holds pocket fours in the small blind. Jay Farber, the big blind, just three bet with ace king of diamonds, making it 1.2 million more to J.C. When Farber sits like that, he just doesn't look like a VIP host. Jay, how much you, uh, you got behind? 24 to start. 24 total? To start the hand, yeah. Almost even stacks. J.C. Tran makes the call. J.C. probably preferred to play a small pot. Now he's going to play a big pot. Heads up between J.C. with eight million in poker earnings and Jay Farber with about two grand in poker earnings. That gives Farber a wheel draw and a flush draw. J.C. is open-ended. That's a big drawing flop, Lon. When I was in the joint upstate, that usually produced the biggest pots. The eight million dollar man checks his draw. 
Farber with chips. And Farber sometimes has trouble moving his arms because they are so big. <laughs> Jay Farber with a continuation bet of 2,350,000. Fun fact for you, China is known for its so-called four great inventions, paper making, the compass, gunpowder, and the continuation bet. That might be the most ridiculous thing you've ever said on the show. J.C. Tran now needs an ace or a six to make his straight. Farber needs a four for his straight. J.C. calls. J.C. does so many things right at the poker table. When he's out of position, he's not playing big pots without a big hand. He's very aware of where he's at. Seven of spades on the turn. Tran still with the best of it, and he checks again. Farber checks as well. Farber says no. Eight of spades misses both the pocket. Fours are good for J.C. Tran. And he checks Barber checks back, will not challenge J.C. here, and J.C. will take the pot. Farber frustrated. Can't you just make a set? Farber took a free turn card, then decided not to bluff the river, and he's thinking twice about that now. Yeah, Jay maybe could have strong-armed that pot from J.C. Tran, who now is over 30 million. Maybe you never heard of J.C. Tran, but like others before him, the main event just might make him unforgettable. 11 players left, and J.C. Tran is the one to beat. With 11 players left, the feeling in the Amazon room is different than it was last year. As you might remember, Norway's Elizabeth Hill and France's Gail Bowman dominated the conversation as we headed towards the final table. Everyone wondered, would a woman make the final for the first time since Barbara Enright in 1995? Would two women make it? Ultimately, they did both bubble, much to the disappointment of many in the poker community. Tonight, the focus is on the pros. Can the 2001 main event champion Carlos Mortensen take an improbable shot at a second main event title. Will J.C. Tran have a chance to add to his bracelet collection? 11 players are left as the final table bubble approaches. The numbers game at this stage is simple. Only nine will get in, and that means Matt Reed and Mark Newhouse are on the outside looking in right now. No one wants to bubble this final table. Dean Hambrick, Jordan Smith, Brandon Steven, John Hewitt, and Gail Bowman, the five November 9, 10th place finishers. It's the list you don't want to make. Ryan Reese open for 800,000 with Queen Nine suited. Carlos Mortensen in the big blind with Jack Deuce of Hearts. And Carlos wants to play for 400,000. He makes the call. Carlos defending with Jack Deuce. No one's stealing his blind. The flop. Seven Queen Deuce. Both pair up. Bottom pair for Carlos. Top pair for Reese. Carlos checks. Well, one bad thing leads to another for Carlos. Perfect example, 1988 led to 1989 for me. <laughs> Carlos shouldn't be in the hand in the first place, Lon. Flopping bottom pair should get him in trouble. Ryan Reese is going to make him pay a little more. 675. Carlos's chip stack looks like a game of Jenga gone wrong. <laughs> Not his finest work, in my opinion. Mortensen calls with the smallest piece of that flop. Sure, you need to play a lot of pots five-handed, but you also don't want to spew. It's kind of like you know you have to jump into a cold pool to get going, but man, it's cold in there. King of hearts on the turn. Reese still good. Carlos checks again. Reese checks back, a free river card for both. River card is a jack, and Carlos Rivers jacks up to steal it. Really? <laughs> Here's my pro analysis, Lon. Carlos is sleeping with angels. <laughs> a bet of 1.4 million. And a quick call from Reese Cooper. with only a pair of queens. And those are some very helpful chips making their way to the 0-1 champs bank. I don't know how the Matador won that bullfight. He didn't have a cape or a sword. You see Mortensen's wife, Pastora, among the cheering section. Carlos with almost 13 million. Carlos living dangerously. Can he make it back to a second main event final table? Well, you see Matt Reed is on his feet at the secondary table, and by the look on his face, it's not good news for the Ohio semi-retired pro. He's all in with King Four, called by the pocket queens of J.C. Tran. Reed pushed with 13 big blinds. He needs help to stick around. J.C. trying to knock out Reed and get us 10-handed. 8-9-4, Reed picks up bottom pair. The Queens are still good for J.C. Bottom pair, that's a start. J.C. Tran seems unconcerned with Matt Reed's fate. Turn card now. 
The eight of diamonds does read no good. Tran an 89% favorite to finish Reed off. Reed needs a king or a four. And the river card is a nine, sending Matt Reed to the exit after a tremendous run in this main event. And Reed was 89th at the 2010 main event and now 11th in 2013. Well done. He'll earn over $573,000. JC keeps building his stack. He's over $40 million now. You're too good, Ken. You're too good. Ten players, one table when we come back. Welcome back. It's the biggest bubble in all of poker. Ten players left at the 2013 main event. Nine make the final table in November. Everyone looking to accumulate chips, but they also just want to survive. J.C. Tran with a 10 million chip lead over Mark Etienne McLaughlin. J.C. has more than 20% of the chips in play. Mark Newhouse looking for a main event miracle. Newhouse with just five big blinds. The clock is ticking on him. There you see the payouts for the remaining players. A $7.8 million difference between next out and last one standing. If you finish 10th, that's the most disappointing half million you'll ever make. A redraw has brought all 10 players to this table. All get new seats, except Carlos, who actually drew the same seat he was in. Sylvain Loosely on the button, queen four, and a raise to 800,000. Bromo House folds a small blind. New house in the big with a six. It's an ace, five big blinds. It's an ace, five big blinds. It is the bubble, though. Yeah, in his defense, it's the November 9 bubble. When those chips are gone, you're gone. He should think about it. And he's all in. All in. And a quick call from Luz Lee. And Newhouse with the best of it pre-flop. Queen four versus a six. Nine guys at this table rooting for a queen or a four. Carlos Mortensen, one elimination away from getting to the final table and a chance for a second main event title. Everyone here on their feet. This could be it right here. Newhouse was the chip leader earlier on day seven, but he's been a short stack now for a while. All right, here's the flop. And there's an ace for Newhouse to increase his advantage. Loosely did pick up bottom pair. Turn card a nine keeps Newhouse in the lead. With a river queen or four, Sylvain Loosely would send Mark Newhouse home on the November nine bubble. Much of the crowd rooting for Loosely just to end it now. Let's get to nine. River card. Seven of hearts and we remain 10 handed. Newhouse remains the short stack, but remains. Well, the air out of that balloon. What a sweater. Eh? Oh, man. Breathe, kid. Breathe. Huh? Breathe. Hey. That's right. <laughs> hey, air is free, bro. Breathe. Okay, man. Newhouse can smile with 12 big blinds, and he can breathe. <laughs> a very small hit to lose Lee, who remains in fourth place with 10 players left. Mark Newhouse with an even five million now. In an interview, Newhouse candidly told us about his poker priorities. For me, money is more important than recognition. Um, I've been through all the, the fame and you know being known as a good player, having respect. That stuff's not really worth very much to me. And throw his ups and downs. Newhouse credits Joe Cassidy and 1996 main event champ Huckleberry Seed for getting his head straight. Newhouse and actually most of this table are no strangers to this stage of a tournament. Obviously, the main event is unique. The majority of these 10 have made big final tables either at the World Series or WPT. Experience is so critical. Under the gun, Mark Etienne McLaughlin, ace-queen offsuit. Second in chips behind Tran right now. A raise to 850. Under the gun raise with ace queen on the bubble at a 10 handed table? <laughs> get it fixed! <laughs> you gotta get your poker code in print ASAP, Norman Jet. Fold it around to Ryan Reese on the button with ace queen off. It's the same hand, Lon. Yeah. We must be at least 75 feet from the table, and I can see that from here. <laughs> McLaughlin with an under the gun raise. Now Reese at the best position at the table, makes the call. Come on, on the button with ace queen, calling after someone under the gun is raised? Get it fixed! Mortensen in the small blind. He folds. 
Big blindfold. How much you started with? How much you started a hand with? 18, roughly. 18. Maybe a little less. I don't like either hand. I believe the pot should be redistributed to the other eight players. Well, let's see if your ace queen never wins. Hold up here, Mr. Chad. They both will lose. <laughs> there is a queen for both. Well, see, top pair, top kicker for both line. Neither can win the hand outright if they both stay in. Ace queen never wins, even when it does. Well, guaranteed a chop at showdown if it gets there. McLaughlin has the action. A million one. Reese and McLaughlin have tangled a few times on day seven. I don't think this is good for Canadian U.S. relations. <laughs> the percentages tell the story, but this game is about so much more than the card you're dealt. There's a call from Reese. Turn card. King of Hearts. Mark Etienne. Reese is looking at Mark Etienne, wondering where the tattoos are. <laughs> Two big stacks with 10 players left with the same hand. And McLaughlin keeps firing a million seven hundred thousand. Actually, this hand could end up with one ace queen winner and one ace queen loser. Who's got more moxie? Well, let's see if Reese can live up to his nickname. A lot of those almond chips, Norman. And there's a raise to 3.8 million. Oh, there's some Michigan State moxie. The beast advertising a bigger hand than he has here. This 23-year-old seems to be one very cool customer. Mark Etienne McLaughlin can afford the call. Does he want to afford the call? No, he'll lay it down. And with that well-timed aggression, Reese takes a pot that really should have been split. All ace queens are not created equal. Two players, same hand, one winner. Let's hear what Antonio Esfandiari and Phil Locke thought about Reese's play. One can only imagine the pressure that comes with getting so deep in a tournament that started with over 6,000 people. Now down to 10, there's a huge difference between 10 and nine. I've never been in this spot before. Phil, you'll probably never be in this spot. And so, Mark Etienne and Ryan, they both have the same hand, but one has a little more courage than the other. Ryan shows that courage with that raise in the turn. It's not a traditional line in any way, but basically he's saying, hey, there's another bet coming. And Mark Etienne says, well, I don't want to be there for it. Right, and I think that if this was a regular poker game or maybe another tournament with a lot more people left, not the massive from 10 to 9 to the final table, I think that there's a very good chance that Mark Etienne would have actually called. So you have to take everything into perspective. Young Ryan Reese with a beast-like timely raise to take down a pot with the skill of a seasoned pro. Tonight's bracelet moments are presented by PokerNews.com. Guy La Liberté's One Drop Charity has done wonders for the World Series, and in two events this year, more goodwill was spread. 23-year-old UCLA graduate Brian Yoon defeated a field of nearly 5,000 to win the $1,111 Little One for One Drop. And in the $111,111 One Drop High Roller Tournament, it was Tony Gregg who won the bracelet and over $4.8 million. Tony Gregg scored the second biggest of the 2013 World Series of Poker. The main event, of course, is the biggest. Longtime pro J.C. Tran on top at the moment. And let me give props to my Maryland boys, good friends Greg Merson, Tony Gregg, and Christian Harder. Merson, the main event champ last year. Greg, the one-drop high roller champ this year. And Harder with four straight main event caches. Three players saw a flop. J.C. with top pair, bad kicker. Farber, top pair, a better kicker. Carlos Mortensen with a Broadway draw. Tran bets a million five twenty-five. Farber says he's sometimes perceived as a loose and crazy player because of the way he looks, but as we know, he plays it pretty snug. With JC on one side, Carlos on the other. Farber in a very tough seat here. And he commits the chips for a call. And now Carlos Mortensen with a Broadway draw. And Carlos taking a little off the top, a little off the lower level. And that's a call. Carlos is mystifying me tonight, and I know it's absurd that I'm questioning him, but I didn't like him playing that 
Jack Deuce from the big blind. And I don't know why he didn't re-raise pre-flop here. The hand probably would have been over. Eight of diamonds on the turn. Tran picks up a gut shot. Carlos missed his draw. Carlos should note the Norman Chad School of Poker does have some adult ed classes. <laughs> 8.2 million in the middle. The next player out is the main event final table bubble boy. Tran bets 3,150,000. And now Farber, still best with a stronger queen. Call. Makes the call. Mortensen now. Can he continue? He does get out of the way. So heads up now, Tran and Farber. Farber with the best of it right now. River card, six of diamonds. JC misses his draw, so it's Farber with a better kicker and the best hand. JC checks. Farber checks, and Jay Farber will take a nice pot from the chip leader. A nice pot for King Queen. Jay Farber jumps into fourth place with his brand new total of over 25 million. I don't think those lyrics are by Ira Gershwin or Jay-Z. Jay-Z got pipped to the tune of five and a half million. Jay Farber would love the money, but the jewelry would be nice too. I think once you get this far, yeah, the money's nice, but the bracelet's there, the title's there, and everybody wants to be world champion, or else why would you be in the event? You know, once you see the end in sight, you just want to get the prize. What's the retail value of that bracelet, Lon? About a half million bucks. Ooh. I'll just pick one up used online. That is more than most of the winners get along with their bracelet during the World Series of Poker Summer. All right. Carlos Mortensen under the gun. Ace Jack of Diamonds. And Carlos with a raise to one million even. I mentioned the impressive array of experience boasted by this final nine, but only Carlos has been this deep, of course, in a main event before. Tran folds. On this bubble, it's like you really don't want a hand. You just want it to be over. Sylvain Luce Lee gets out of the hand. So Carlos's raise makes a clean around the table to Ryan Reese with pocket kings. Are you back? Eight. Total. So seven behind? Yeah. I'm just guessing here, but... I doubt Carlos and Ryan have a lot in common. <laughs> Reese bound to raise it up, but how much? All in. He re-raises Mortensen all in. Big moment here for Carlos Mortensen on the November 9 bubble. Call, and he's in trouble. Fold, and he fights on with 17 big blinds. Carlos's pain mirrored in the face of his wife. Mortensen, the oldest at the table, being tested by the youngest at this table. And Carlos does lay it down. Reese building, Mortensen withering. Nearly 26 and a half million for the beast now. A little easier to play bubble bully with pocket kings. Mortensen slips the ninth place, but it could have been much, much worse for the 0-1 champ. As the final table bubble approaches, Carlos Mortensen moving dangerously close to being the one left behind. Who's who of the poker world in attendance? Jesse Sylvia and Ben Lamb right there. You saw Michael Mizraki earlier. Huck Seed, Eric Lindgren, Phil Helmuth. At the table, the two most accomplished players book in the leaderboard. J.C. Tran on top. Carlos Mortensen, the short stack. Mortensen has the action. Ace nine. If Mortensen wins this thing, it'll be the second longest stretch between main event titles ever, 12 years. Stu Unger went 16 years between his second and third main event bracelets in 1981 and 97. And that's a min raise to 800,000 from Carlos. Another Phil Hellmuth-esque odd play from Carlos. 13 big blinds and a min raise? Most pros likely raise all in there if they're playing it. The raise gets around to the big blind. J.C. Tran, 8-7 off. 
Tran, not with much, but the min raise invites him in, getting nearly five to one on a call here. And there is the call. Heads up, Mortensen and Tran. Two double bracelet winners, heads up on the bubble. Top and bottom of the leaderboard represented. Trey, 10-6, a gut shot to a 10 high straight for JC. Carlos still with the best hand with just ace high. Tran checks. Mortensen with another 800,000. The Matador continues his odd defensive stabbing at this pot. Another small bet, and JC again doesn't have much, but he's getting nearly four to one on a call here. And that is a call. Turn card now, nine of clubs. How oh, Tran turns the straight. Carlos pairs up while collecting the nut flush draw. What a nasty, nasty oh, card wow. for Carlos. Second pair in the nut flush draw, and he's in awful shape now. All in. Tran puts Carlos all in. All in. If Mortensen folds it, he's left with just nine big blinds. Oh. Carlos makes the call, and he needs help with just one card to come. We could have our bubble boy. Carlos doesn't even want to turn over his hand. I I'm shocked, Lon. It's as if Carlos led JC right to that straight, and now the man Phil Helmuth calls the best tournament no limit hold'em player of his generation is about to inexplicably bubble this final table. Mortensen on the chopping block. Tran looking to score the knockout and be the leader of this year's November 9. Mortensen needs a club other than the seven, which gives Tran a straight flush, or our November 9 is set. The river card, the deuce of diamonds. Mortensen falls just short of a second main event final table. Boy, he was so good for so long here. I don't think we saw the best of Carlos Mortensen on this November 9 bubble. Carlos Mortensen accepting his congratulations. Those who stayed with him to the very end taste the bitterness of his defeat as well. Carlos's exit leaves nine worthy souls to battle for the world championship. Newhouse and Benefield slip in as the two short stacks. J.C. Tran will head to the final table as the chip leader. The beast will be there. And this atmosphere is just a warm-up for what's to come at the Penn and Teller Theater for the final table. When we return on November 4th on ESPN2, J.C. Tran will be top dog. Jay Farber might fill the place on his own, but tonight belonged to J.C. Tran. So many of these players were on the edge. Great job getting here. Meanwhile, J.C. Tran was on autopilot down the stretch. In a journey that saw thousands fall. Oh, yeah, man. Good game. Good you got me covered, don't you? Yes! Okay. Yes! Yes! I was right. I call you need a queen. Oh, you need to. No. Chip bladers get tossed by the wayside. Call. Listen. Good game, guys. Good game. And a former main event champ gets stuck on the bubble. Very disappointing. I could have changed son of my play, but it is always another year, you know? Nine players have emerged. It's kind of starting just to sink in right now. It, it, it hit me like a couple minutes ago. It's incredible. I'm just really happy. I'm really excited to have a chance to, you know, win the World Series main event. It's crazy. But just one has earned the title of chip leader. I did it. I did it. I did it for everybody at home, my wife, my son. J.C. Tran and eight others will return on November 4th and 5th to take aim at $8.3 million and the most coveted piece of jewelry poker has to offer, the main event bracelet. The regular season is over. Time for poker's playoffs. For Norman Chad and Kara Scott, I'm Lon McCarran. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.